Block 3, main guns 1450M K9, loaded, 08, fire at, 1, 5 thirds, range minus 40 kilometers. Secondary guns 445M K19, loaded, 012, fire at, 1020, range minus 18 kilometers. Guided missiles MM40 Exocet, loaded, 8 eighths, javelin manpad, ready. 864 AA guns 40 mm slash 70 sac 600 loaded 16 16ths radar guidance offline 20 mm MK 72 phalanx sills loaded 4 fourths radar guidance offline 0 0.50 M2 Browning loaded 8 eighths helicopter pad ready links has dot 2 ready 2 halves when I looked at the new bridge I felt both delighted to see the familiar parts still installed, and sad to see that I don't have a bunch of sci-fi holographic displays. The most sci-fi thing here is a CRT monitor. Unlike previously, my radar view is just a little bit clearer and gives better image of air and surroundings. Of course, after I checked, it was due to the radars being broken. The first thing I tried was the helipad. One Sea Lynx helicopter drove out of a small hangar and prepared to take off. A second after it gained some altitude, its rotor blades touched the superstructure and the helicopter crashed in an inferno. Great, wonderful, terrific. Eleven crashed helicopters out of one. I tried launching the second one, after the fire was extinguished. Luckily, the helicopter will respawn after one hour. Ta 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 the second helicopter lifted off the pad and slowly floated out of the deadly trap. This time nothing stood in its way and it flew in the direction the bait fleet arrived from. Even at its maximum speed the helicopter was slow. However, its advanced optics were times better than a binocular. The rep. Broken radars, and alive and well observation posts reported nothing. As the time passed clouds appeared on the horizon. I wondered if it will affect the detection. Miss Delight, what are we going to do? I mean, the battle should be over by now. L, is it? I wonder if the Empire will surrender. As the sky started filling with clouds, I prepared to recall the recon but the helicopter reported an anomaly. There was only a small chance it would be the castle ship but the longer the recon continued, the closer I was to discovering the enemy location, here you are. A video of a huge castle-like floating object arrived. While it is huge, it still managed to sneak to 13 nautical miles from me. If not a suspicion of mine, I might have even missed it. The next concern was what to do. The weather was becoming worse and the helicopter will have to return very soon. With no radars and no corrections it is useless to open fire now. If I would not hit and cripple the ship with the first salvo, it will be alerted and will try to retreat. I decided to engage. Firing in 3, 2, 1. Boom 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 the shots scattered around. I managed to get one near hit, and two shots even hit the target but they ricocheted. The castle ship started turning around to retreat. I decided it would be foolish to give the enemy a chance to regroup. I continued observing the ship's movements until the wind became insufferable and the helicopter was forced to return. The helicopter nailed the approach and was about to touch down when the cruiser hit a wave. After the second fire extinguisher use I continued the chase. By the time I arrived to the last known location, the castle ship was already away. Without an operational radar I was chasing the shadows in a storm. As the storm grew stronger I started losing the final clues I had. Yet, I had few of them. That's more than none. I put all of the eggs in one basket of searching to the left of the castle ship's course. I see something. Xera reported from the topmost point of the ship. I prepared to open fire with guns 
as the missiles were unable to fire at such close range. Bang 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 I fired again and again but with no reported result. Pom until one shot hit something and set the target on fire. Without a radar it was the closest I could get to seeing the target so I prepared the main guns. I turned to show my broadside. Boom 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 pipe ping ping the enemy guns hit my belt but they had no chances of penetrating it. Boom 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 I hurried the firing. Instead of two shots, the X turret spewed small flames out of its barrels and I had to sink it in hurry to avoid a detonation. Of course, with how rash my firing was the accuracy was lacking. I achieved no hit with the main guns and began raining fire from smaller calibers. Bang bang bum 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 b r r r r r t t t t t only 102 mm was an actual threat to the castle ship's armor but the explosive ammunition flying around managed to scatter its sailors and prevent resistance. I prepared for the final shots when one of the turrets broke its elevation and the other suffered from a fire. Boom bang 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 despite being so close to the enemy, I was still unable to do anything normal. Boom one shell penetrated the armored front of the ship but did not explode. Yet, I fired everything into the breach. Boom bang b r r r t t t t boo boo bum I was already considering ramming after having a lot of misses from point blank but I still prepared to fire the last two shots of 14, which got stuck in the autoloader. V2 CH80, V Victis, in two kilometers away from me was a huge ship in metal armor. We exchanged a lot of shots. Their guns and arrows did nothing to my armor. Not to mention the insides. My main guns missed every shot and all broke down. Bang 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 despite my continuous fire from the secondaries. They were too weak to deliver a lethal blow to the enemy. They already burned down everything that is outside of the armored hull, and broke the oars. All of the enemy weaponry was silenced but the ship still was afloat. 102 mm high explosive shells cannot penetrate the armor while armor-piercing have too few explosive filler to deal significant damage. I guess it's a good time to use the repair kits lying around. All four gun turrets were instantly repaired but the aft turrets, which suffered from fire and were flooded, require additional time to pump the water out. I did not wait until all of the turrets are ready and began loading for the four guns. The newly repaired A turret instantly started spewing fire so I spent the final repair kit and a fire extinguisher to bring it back to action. Meanwhile, B opened fire. Boom two large holes appeared in the front of the castle ship. A smoke started coming out of there. I prepared for the second salvo. Out of the four turrets only one had a malfunction. A jam will be solved quickly. Boom 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 the first shot pierced right through the metal plating. The third hit something below the waterline. The fourth crushed one of the gun platforms of the castle ship, and the fifth made a hole right in the superstructure. By the time the shots were fired, the last gun turret was back in action. Boom boom two shells hit the middle of the ship. Kaboom a huge explosion happened after the smoke settled. The castle ship started rapidly sinking. All stations gather at the deck. We need to save the survivors. The Duke, who previously just stared at the carnage with his mouth open, turned around and shouted. What do you mean save them? They are our enemies. D. The sea is cruel to everyone. If we won't save them, then no one will. It's not like the kingdom just kills all of the prisoners, right? You are making a huge mistake. He shook his head and returned to the window while grumbling. I turned the ship to the wreck and turned off the propulsion. Despite the waves and the wind, a small crew of ours was dropping life rafts and boats to the survivors caught out of the darkness by the searchlights, like moths coming to the light. The survivors were trying to reach the illuminated areas. We were picking up whoever we could find. Only 39 people survived and were placed at the bow of the ship, under the watchful gaze of Xera. The highest ranking officer survived was a commander of one of the cannon's crew so there was nothing useful we could find. After the rescue operation was finished I slowly steamed towards the Empire's capital. By the time we arrived, the storm was almost over. 
There were some waves and wind but not to the level of causing us trouble. I approached the capital even closer than before. The port was within my line of sight. The defenders placed there the few cannons that survived the bombardment. A large number of men took positions. Steady, men. The sergeant shouted at the gun crew. After the terror of the previous day the garrison lost too many soldiers and now he had to command militia who not only never fired a gun, they never even saw it from close range. Fire. He shouted when the huge castle ship entered the firing range. Boom 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 the battery fired but neither of the shots hit. The ship started turning. Normally, when a ship turns away after being fired at, it means they are scared. But everyone here knew. This one is not going to fool around with them. Lift the carriage. Lift the carriage. Faster, damn you. The sergeant hurried the men to move the cannon. Every second they stood in a place was approaching them to their death. When he looked at the ship, his heart sank into the heels. The large houses on top of the ship's deck were turning their own cannons at them. And everybody knew what those cannons can do. One of the ship's cannon was lifted high, as if it was about to shoot down the sky itself. Boom one shot was enough to destroy everything. The morale, the army, the city, the hope and the empire. All soldiers were shaking like grass stems in a fierce storm. All militiamen scattered and ran for their lives. All resistance that was planned, now became a wild dream of people, who are completely disconnected from the reality. Sign here, and here, and here. Also, on this page, Lily, where is the next list? A moment please. I almost finished writing. L, fine. Then. Oh. Right. Sign here. Here, and here. The poor emperor's eyes were filled with small tears as he signed under every term of the unconditional and complete surrender aboard HMS Delight. All conditions of this surrender were filled in as the time and imagination went on, and caused the emperor to turn grey and old within one day. The Wind's Side Story of Withered Blossom No. 3. Updated. Everything I saw was corrected. The SS chapter is now somewhat standard. Cheers. Food chain when the moonlight illuminated the oasis I saw a scene of hunt. Two animals were chasing after a large group of animals. At first I was only curious to see what I can find out of it. However, after a torch appeared out of nowhere my curiosity was attracted there. Inside dense vegetation, be it a grove or a huge bush, one torch lit up and soon was followed by many other torches. In a few moments the torches moved out of the vegetation and began grouping in the way of the predators. The beings that were trying to oppose the hunt were humanoid but further study is necessary to understand who or what they are. Four dive bombers were lifted to the flight deck and waited for their turn to take off, after a flight of fighters had switched. The dive bombers were launched and started circling above the oasis. Meanwhile, I was watching at what is going on. The humanoids were desperately fighting against the beasts that dedicated all of their attention to smaller but easily accessible prey. Out of the initial twenty, the humanoids had only seven left. They were not using firearms but had some sort of a way to use fire and ice from the distance. Perhaps it is magic. It would be the only logical conclusion that I am no longer on Earth. Whatever, I sent the fighters to scatter everyone. As the predators ran away, the dive bombers began attack. Boom 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 it was over in a moment. Four craters and four humanoids searching for cover. I have no idea if I killed somebody but nobody would blame me. Especially if I make my appearance in the morning. For now. It is time to sleep. The Wind's Side Story of Withered Blossom No. 4. Updated. Standardized. Cheers. An actor's death. Wake up. What? My peaceful sleep was interrupted all of a sudden. I jolted but saw no one nearby. Only a distant plane disturbed the dead silence of the desert. Whatever it was, it managed to sneak through all of the patrols. I will have to tighten the security. I confirmed that I slept through day and woke up in the evening. Tonight I will be making my appearance in front of the humanoids I saved before. For them I will be a traveler who made it through desert and coincidentally walked into them and their grief. 
for me they will be a great way of finding, well, the way out of here. By the time I arrived, they managed to bury all of the dead bodies to hide them from me. One of them twitched and turned around when I was still far, it pointed at me and they all stood up at once. All of them were uneasy and quite possibly mistrustful of me. Still, I approached. Anya-chan, do you know where Ma is? Their faces were worth everything. I love it when everyone turns gentle when facing me. Even that person could not withstand my charm. Just make it cute and you are golden Tilda. What happened to you, girl? Have you got separated from your caravan? A man's voice. One great sword, fought in the front lines. A knight? Yes. You, you, you. We were sleeping when a noise came from outside. Ma stepped out to check but you, 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 you. even those who still showed mistrust were carefully whispering words of comfort and hugging me. Now, it is time to interrogate them. Anya-chan, where is your caravan? The Wind's Side Story of Withered Blossom No. 5. Updated. It still hurts a bit but everything is fine. Or so they say. Ingratiating I arranged what I found out after talking with the saved people. They might not know that but they now owe me. From what I managed to find, those people were part of a merchant caravan which moved between the oases. After seeing them from a close range I confirmed that this is not the real world as I know it. There were two males, a huge orc warrior and a dwarven blistery. And there were two females, an elven scout and a human priest. While the former category is stronger and are more useful for my survival, the females could be used to earn myself money, and money is, for now. I just helped them herd the surviving pack animals and said that I am a plainmancer. It is a miracle we all survived. If the beasts continued attacking, neither of would have survived. Scout, I have no idea how it happened so we must be careful. Warrior, good idea, brother. We should keep going and take that child with us. The desert claimed enough lives for this time. Bali. Archer? Crossbowman? No idea. They brought me with the caravan. Originally they were soldiers of their caravan but now it is their duty to deliver the goods to a town at the edge of this desert. Otherwise, Anichan, why are you hurrying so much? If the owner's clan suspects us of stealing the goods and the lives of their kin, we will be hunted forever. We sworn to protect them and should we fail to, the blood feud will start. Priest, at least this adventure should be worth it. The longer I stay away from those blockhead sisters, the better. The Wind's Side Story of Withered Blossom No. 6. Updated. I was released so here are the updates to the SS chapters. The actual chapters will start tomorrow. Survive. Adapt. Enjoy. Wake up. My peaceful sleep was suddenly interrupted. Are you alright? You had a nightmare? The elven scout looked at me when I jumped out of the sleeping bag. Um, come here. It was nice to be comforted by a female. The fat airballs do not count. After the caravan protection group, which failed its duty, was done refilling water and gathering the surviving pack animals we moved out and are in the middle of the desert once again. I just slept for an hour but I was really awoken by a voice out of nowhere. It appears that nobody but me can hear it. The warrior and the bar whatever were leading the caravan. The scout is here with me, baby sitting on the move, and the priest is riding a beast further from the caravan to search for any problems around. Those people appear to be used to this lifestyle so they might be similar to nomadic tribes. A Nichan. Are you always moving back and forth with the caravans? Well, yes. We make stops in the towns at the edge of the desert but their life is too alien to us. S. If they are nomads it should mean there are more than one group of them, and wherever there is a chance. Anichan, are you protecting the caravans from beasts? Not only. S. Have you encountered raiders as well? I asked while preparing aircraft. You mean bandits? Yeah, those are pain in there. I mean they are bad people. Don't worry. We will protect you. I could only giggle and launch scout aircraft. The main wave will be launched under better circumstances. V2CH81 Of pillaging and loot after my unquestionable victory I decided to take Lily, X, 
Sarah and Charlotte for a walk. Being on a ship for longer than a month is not something one would enjoy too much, unless they are used to. Of course, the official reason was to release the prisoners of war but does it cancel the possibility of sightseeing? I quickly herded the prisoners to the occupied corps officer and returned to the girls. We started our excursion from one of the least destroyed parts of the city. Despite its vicinity to the fortress, what a crappy place. Xera started whining immediately. Why do you think so? You made us miss all that glorious looting and slaughter. I cleared my ears before asking what she meant. I am sorry. I might have misheard you. Can you repeat what you said? Come on. The entire plot of this campaign was to plunder this city and take all gold and pricey things we could find. I looked at the other girls, neither of them was concerned with Xera's crazy words. No way we are doing it, was it not enough for you to have this city in ruins? She absent-mindedly looked at some ruins around the fortress and shook her shoulders. Then, I'll be going. Before she could go I grabbed her and dragged after our tourist group. Deus Velt, damn it. What does it mean? L, a call to start slaughtering everyone you consider infidel. Now that's a funny thing. X, you brute. It won't work on me, call me whatever you want. I got used to it. X, flat. As. Don't you F dare. I smiled like a Cheshire cat. A lot of beautiful building and alleys were dirtied by rubble and bricks lying around. The streets were empty and everyone barricaded inside their houses. The plank, the watermelons and the blonde were not too interested by the sight but the very moment I was turning around to look at them. They were excitedly looking around. It can only mean one thing. I should help them understand the fun of being a tourist. I was attracting their attention to architecture, and wall paintings, the ones more culturally worth and less depicting desires of flesh. With a questionable success we finally made our way to the palace. Xera, you waited for it, did you? Her excitement showed itself clearly but I still had to take the sword out of her hands. When we approached the entrance, the guards blocked our way with spears. Nobody can enter the palace unless his majesty allows it. Oh my, oh my, oh my, did he forget his good friends who came to visit him Tilda? The guards shivered and one of them entered the palace. Five minutes later he returned and we were allowed to enter. Ho 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 Tilda. Do you understand that it is a blessing that I decided to visit this place? Be grateful that I dedicated my time to bless every one of you with my beauty. C, and modesty. L, of course. Modesty is one of my many virtues. Charlotte smirked. And the other ones are? L, I am. Before she could start, I ruffled her hair. Lilith too was not left unattended. And before Xera could explode from laughing at the two's reaction, I petted her as well. Of course. Then I had a small corridor. I am here Tilda. Don't you move an inch. Voila Tilda. You can't run forever. Our fooling around really makes me feel warm and wish we could keep it like that forever. No longer can I imagine being separated from any of my companions. Not that I don't have a way of assuring it. Of course. For my brilliant plan we required something we could spend. Right at the entrance we were met by a man in a suit. Please follow me. An old butler led us through one of the corridors, deeper into the palace. Where would we be going to? His Majesty instructed me to lead you to the place you wished to keep for yourself. The butler wiped a tear from the corner of his eye. It took us almost an hour to reach the place of interest, a huge armored door that was guarded by knights clad in armor. The butler opened the lock with his trembling hands and the door opened. We entered and saw a lot of interesting things. Lilith had a very peculiar expression. Oxo Charlotte was drooling. Xera. Well, Xera, Xera Tilda. She turned her head like a robot and looked at me. That's my good girl Tilda. Loot Xera, Xera, loot Tilda. And she disappeared. Before I could process what happened, Xera already returned and dropped a full leather bag of gold and jewelry. 
and that was only the first of many. V2CH82. The vacation comes to an end too. Electric Boogaloo we paid a few more visits to the Empire's treasury and had a few dates in the city, which was slowly returning to its normal life. The shops and cafes opened after the people saw that the plundering did not start. One of the reasons is that the bait fleet was too busy keeping their ships afloat and repairing them for the return, and Xera was no longer interested in anything but the treasury. Can we go there again? No. But please Tilda. I said no. Please Tilda. You you are. Seeing this one turn into a child was both adorable and creepy. If it was about the other girls, they would be only adorable. But it is Xera, our meathead knight who was just recently calling for a crusade against this city. Mother said no, which means no. But please, I ignored her further please. Miss Delight, where are we going today Tilda? L, I allow you to choose the place where I will be entertained today Tilda. See, damn you both. After seeing no support, Xera could only accept another date. After we returned from the date, we gathered everybody at the conference room. Now that the majority of the treasury was cleared, I glanced at Xera and a few keys she borrowed to lock the rooms where she stores the bags with gold. We need to prepare for the departure. The Duke and the Crown Prince sighed. The former one spent his time borrowing the paintings and sculptures from wherever he could find, while the latter was nowhere to be seen but the girls look at him with disgust so he must have had fun as well. Cheer up, everybody. The fleet would arrive tomorrow and we will return immediately. All at once. I put an accent on the last part. The conference ended with an almost unanimous voting for staying here, which was vetoed by the chairship. Ta 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 a helicopter started taking off. On its way it hit a lifeboat and went down into the sea. Ta 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 the second helicopter lasted not longer. After I extinguished the fire, I checked the radars. I was not exactly surprised to see them malfunction. All I could do is send Xera to the observation post. During the past two days I was heating the boilers and now. After three hours of waiting, I was reported of an armada approaching. I plotted the course and sent the ship back home. While myself I jumped off and headed to the bait fleet to inform them of the departure. After I was done, I returned. I entered the bridge and headed straight to the Duke. Can your grace do me a favor? What would you need? He looked at me with suspicion. I want you to order the fleet to return home. I am sorry, miss but I am not qualified to do it. D, I see. Then we will have to do it the hard way. In case you decide to cooperate, I will suddenly forget of many precious things you have borrowed in this city. Deal. D, I took him with me and once again jumped off the ship before heading to the main fleet which finally deigned us worthy of being visited. At the flagship we were met with vine and salted meat but we had to skip the banquet because driving a battle cruiser while being drunk. Well, it is not prohibited but it is highly unrecommended. I approached the admiral. Your grace, we welcome you aboard. Miss, you are welcome as well. A, oh my. Thank you for noticing me. I am here to deliver you some good news Tilda. For example? The welcoming business smile of the admiral became stiff. We conquered the capital and signed a peace treaty. The admiral's face was now like of a dead fish. Now, please return back home Tilda. We cannot, as we were ordered by A and I, as the prime minister and commander of this campaign order you to turn around and return. D, yes, your grace. With the chain of command successfully restored and operations successfully completed we were now free to do whatever we want. Of course, eating salted food and drinking alcohol is only a good idea when you are on a solid ground so we had no option but to return to the ship. After we returned to the bridge and everyone was at their positions I increased speed and we headed back home. Ding new achievement. First blood. The first ironclad of this world was sunk. New achievement. Lone's ship. Won a war despite the hindrances you received. One platinum coin. Five gold coins. Four repair kits. 
30 silver coins, 3 fire extinguishers, 46 upgrade points, 2 skill points HMS Delight, BC, mod, 1986 retrofit upgrade progress, 4 tenths, accuracy, 51 hundredths, plus 10, reload, 51 hundredths recoil, 10 one hundredths machinery, 66 50 guns, 50 25 equipment, 80 0 requiem, LVL 4, memento mori, LVL 10, lidite train, LVL 10, on activation, 10's reload for next salvo, the following salvo has 32's reload can be activated every 40's, on activation, minus 25% chance of breakdown and flash fire, when this ship is hit by an attack that would otherwise sink it, 25% chance to completely heal this ship duration, 30's can be activated every 2 minutes, on activation, fires a salvo of helidite shells with higher chance to set fire on target and deal critical damage, has 10% chance of critical malfunction. V2CH83 Pioneers of Wild Lands with a roar the anchors were dropped at the home port, which coincidentally is in the kingdom's capital, before I could go and settle one little thing. Lilith asked me to let her be the first to visit the king. Of course. If she has her own personal reasons for that, I must let her go, not to mention that it gives me some time to get rid of the supervisors, I too had some things to talk about with the king but Lilith wanted to have her talk without anybody interfering, me included. I unloaded all my passengers and found out that I am alone. Charlotte wanted to spend some time with her father. Lilith went to the king and Sarah had to follow. I returned to the ship and from boredom I started hunting the passerby ships by aiming the main guns at them and watching their reactions. Few of them were evading my aim, so I guess not too many people know what I am capable of. Soon I just started to daydream. When I returned from the dreamland I saw Lilith and Charlotte who were lonely on the pier. Both of them held boxes so I hurried to pick them up. After I was done, I headed to the palace and was led right to the throne room. The king was sitting on the throne. To the left of him was standing the duke, and to the right of the throne, on a pillow, was sitting a small figurine which I quickly recognized as the girl in glasses. Before I asked what she does here, she raised her hand to stop me. Fine, whatever. Does your majesty remember what I wanted Tilda? Yes. While you were gone we found a good place for you. We even smuggled the Empire's explosives to make you a harbor. I have no idea how those two are connected but I'll let it be. Wonderful Tilda. Now, here is the treaty I negotiated. May the peace last forever Tilda. I have no idea why it amuses me that the pillaging was derailed but whatever makes it nice, let it be. After the meeting, I was going to talk to the girl in glasses but she dismissed me without uttering a word. She only threw me a map. It appears to be the information on where I can find my new cozy corner. Wait, why new? So, because I had the information where the corner is. I headed there. After three hours of steaming at cruise speed we arrived. The girls were released and their wild instincts were no longer held by morals statuses and opinion. What are you looking at? Xera took a break in her carousing. I am just enjoying the sight of wildcats playing Tilda. Don't compare us, and especially my lady, to wild beasts. X, are you a domesticated knight in any way? Stop it, will you? She returned to playing. Watching those three kittens play healed my soul and nourished my mind. Of course. I was not sitting idly and made myself useful by planning the house. I planned its size and some of the rooms. It will not be a mansion of needlessly huge size but a comfortable two-floor house. For now, everything is just an imaginary plan, lines on the ground and a few stones at the corners. While I was engrossed in work, Charlotte orbited the construction site closer and closer until she stopped near me. Miss Delight, if you want. I can recommend you the best architects in the world. I sensed a bit of showing off but it is a good idea nonetheless. I have a good idea too. 
Lilith materialized nearby as soon as Charlotte approached me. What did you want to say? My mother is a good architect we should use her ideas. L, I never heard the demon lord to be a good architect. Charlotte giggled. Her ideas are too avant-garde for the simple-minded snobs. The atmosphere started to tense. Girls, is it really a good idea to just do whatever you want without even considering the other options? We should try to make the lemonade out of every lemon we have available. How about we use Xera's newly obtained wealth for the sake of having options to choose from? Neither of them made objections in time so we skipped the voting part. With everything decided I went out to inform Catalina about the contest, and to make some preparations for the contest I will hold. While I sailed to the capital and the academy, Charlotte and Lilith finished sending letters to the architects they knew. Xera was working hard too and with her muscle strength she made a small hut where the girls could live properly. Properly here means they have a roof and were not colder than the air. My architect contest was simple. I said what I want to see and told the sizes. Then I picked up some workers and materials, and headed back to the construction site. It is not worth mentioning that I was a bit surprised to see that these sheltered girls survived for that long without actually becoming wild. All right, ladies. Are you ready to settle down at the edge of the world? Yes. A meek cry was my answer. V2CH84. The project and the bully after three weeks of settling down and the making temporary houses for the workers, and sheds for the materials, I returned to the capital to see the results of my competition. The first turn of the competition was weeding out the quickies and other exciting marvels of design that literally have nothing to do with the task given. I saw a lot of great ideas and out of the entire pool of contestants only 21 remained. At the second contest I started weeding out the ideas that just don't meet my image. For example, a castle-like house, a house made of ivory, a house decorated with columns and gold. After that only 12 contestants remained. Catalina was one of them. I worked hard. C.A. I am sorry to say it but I will be merciless. It is for the sake of Lily, after all. I understand. Despite her quiet voice, she was very determined to win. At the third selection I actually looked into the designs, the room's layout and the sizes of everything. Weirdly, the only house where the requirements were actually met was designed by, you have carte blanche, my lady. W what does it, mean? C.A. It means your project was chosen as the prototype. Now, please do pack everything you would need. We are setting sail tomorrow at the dawn. Why yes. But we should do it quickly. The students are left alone. I decided not to remind her of the reputation she bears, or the fact that they will be blissed if she would be gone for longer. Now, this angle can it be removed or smoothed? It is not the best idea. It is harder to make and the stability of the second floor will be questionable. C.A. While I was arguing with Catalina on how to improve the house, Lilith and Charlotte were having an argument of their own in the distance. Unlike our constructive criticism of each other's ideas, they had a literal bullying of Charlotte. After another passage, Charlotte started crying and ran into me. What happened back there? It was just a coincidence. See? Was it Tilda? L? Of course. It is no more than her pity. If the demon lord was not your mother, she would lose to anyone. See, yeah Tilda, right Tilda. Funny to hear that from the one who boasted how her friends will be competing with each other whose design is better. I heard they were kicked out from the competition the first. L? Lies. I was just too compassionate and let the demon lord to have the victory. I can change my decision any moment. See? So, if we ask Miss Delight, will she tell us that it is like that Tilda? L. Y. K. H. M. You are just a bastard. How dare you question an actual noble like myself? Charlotte was cornered and now could only resort to her authority. Face the reality, noblest of nobles. I am closer to Miss Delight than you are Tilda. My mother is designing her home. I am always guarded by her. 
I can ask her whatever I want and whenever I want, and, I am going to be. L, 30 seconds later, hey, hey, don't cry, T-S-H-H-H, don't cry. I hugged the crying girl and glared at Lily, I told them not to catfight, and told it more than once. She just does not want to accept the reality. Lilith frowned. We will talk about it later. I warned Lilith and returned to comforting Charlotte. It took me a lot of efforts to calm down Charlotte. Well, I did not calm her down myself, she just cried herself to sleep. Despite her attitude, I feel like Charlotte is the last person to be able to withstand questioning her. Now, tell me what was the reason for bullying Charlotte? Cherry could not accept that she was defeated. L, I bet she did not start to cry just because you said that. Maybe there was something else, Tilda. Lilith winked but I flashed to pinch her cheeks. You 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 you. L, will you answer what was the reason? Sob no. After seeing how Lilith changed I did not dare interrogating her further. After a single question she turned from cheerful and playful to crying. Ten minutes later. Xera's puff after Miss Delight left and my lady calmed down I approached her, did everything go smoothly? She shook her head and sighed, how many times should I tell you, the longer you postpone everything, the worse it will be, Mr. Tyrion is not going to be idle while you are hesitating, Clemen, stick out your chest and proudly approach that blockhead, then tell her, my lady twitched and ran somewhere, what? That vixen. Before I could ask, my lady ran away. I just wonder if her courage only works on dealing with Miss Evan. V2CH85 Forest Playground For a week I was constantly split between the female population of the land I own. For example, because of how Catalina had to discuss each and every change with me, I often could be seen near her tent. The same goes for the rest of the girls. Xera too was trying to keep my attention on herself. After the initial excitement died out and the routine tasks were dealt with and delegated to the hard workforce, she became bored and her way of dealing with it. Jiahua? X? Ding Ping Pu Clang Just why on earth would you want to fight me? Because it's fun. X? IT can be fun for a couple of times but not after an entire week. Find yourself something else to do. Sorry. Can't hear you. X, clang ping ping, sometimes I do worry if she is a battle maniac. Don't get this, Urgh, damn it. I casually blocked her attack and kicked her legs. I won, did I? I pointed the stiletto at her. Yeah, the next time I will aim for win. X, you said that yesterday, and a day prior to that, and... Shut up, milady is waiting for you Tilda. X. Every second I am not caught by Catalina or by Xera. The hunt begins. Lilith and Charlotte try to catch me. It's not like I am not enjoying it but I just have no time for myself. Miss Delight. And here comes the salvation. Oh my, be so kind to tell me how I can help you. T the wooden planks are too thick. I am not sure they can be made thinner. C.A. Then let us go and take a look. When we arrived to the sawmill, Catalina measured the lumber to show what she meant. The planks were just a centimeter thicker than planned but if we were to use them in the construction as they are, we would have a lot of corners and connections that stick out, which might hurt the gentle carefree birds flying around. We can either correct the plans, or ask the carpenter to thin the planks. C.A. I guess we will have to work with what we have. How much time would it take to rework the plan? It will only take a day. C.A. Nice to know it. Please do make the necessary changes. Thank you for your hard work. The very moment I turned around, I was captured. Miss Delight. Miss Delight. You promised to take me to the river. L. I am going to be the first. You already were the first yesterday. C. Silence, Vixen. Don't forget I let you be the first for two days in row. L, it is your duty to let me be the first. C, one more catfight and I will ship both of you back to the academy for the duration of the construction works. They immediately calmed down. Lily, 
please do come here. She stuck her tongue out at Charlotte. Lilith cheerfully ran forward. Normally one would try relaxing when in the forest. A fresh breeze and lush vegetation are a great way to distract one's mind from the routine and problems. However, I need to be wary of Lilith's moves. I don't want her to fall, and on this road she can trip at any moment. Miss Delight, are you alright? Are you troubled with something? L, but of course I am. You barely look at where you are going. Sorry Tilda. And she still does not try to be cautious. Aside from a couple of times she lost her balance. We arrived safely. Lilith slipped out of her dress and in a newborn's outfit jumped into the river. Xera will claim me to be pervert but they are worth it. Unlike Lily, I did not release my inner child and instead broke off a branch and turned it into a makeshift fishing rod. I made the necessary preparations, like setting up the wood for campfire. After I was done, I quietly sat at the shore and fished. After an hour, my only catch was the infamous lily fish which grabbed the bait three times, of which she got off the hook two times and one time dragged me into the water and started splashing me with her fins. Of course, I could not not win against her and now I am carrying my trophy out of the water. Ha 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 Tilda. Put me down Tilda. Her wet skin was glinting under the sunshine. I sat her near an unlit campfire and covered her with the cloak while I was lighting the fire. I love playing like that with you Tilda. L, I too love spending my time with you. I sincerely smiled. H hey, Miss Delight. Are you? Well. L, what is it? MMM. L. Marry me. L, what? The Wind's Side Story of Withered Blossom No. 7. Undercover. Wake up, I jolted from the voice in my head. I looked around myself and confirmed that nobody tried playing a prank on me. The caravaners were all asleep. Instead of thinking about it further I refocused my attention. I woke up in the night with everyone asleep. It is impossible to think of a better circumstance for a little exercise. Reports of my scouts made during the evening confirmed there are some groups nearby. I have no idea if they are bandits as I was only following the hot trail and had no way of finding them immediately. I want to test how well the locals handle air attacks. When I found a small group I prepared all available flights of repas. After all, it would be a shame not to give the ground a chance. If the aircraft are not seen attacking, the locals might not even try defending themselves. I slipped out of the encampment and launched the squadrons. The fighters were only carrying their guns so the ground should have a slight chance of opposing me. Meanwhile, the planes grouped for the attack and two V formations headed towards the target. The aircraft performed two flybys and only then dispersed to strafe the ground targets. A burst of bullets landed in the middle of the targets causing them to scatter in terror. The people started organizing the defense. Another attack, and the formations were thinned out. Soon, there were no people left. The defenders barely opposed such a simple attack. I did not even order the fighters to make evasive maneuvers, yet. Whatever, I will evaluate everything after I return. V2CH86 Bridal Fever Lilith and I were sitting near a campfire in an awkward silence. She just proposed to me and now my mind is a complete mess. You idiot. You are a mindless piece of s. Just how? How could you miss it? It was so evident. Comma, I if you are conflicted about the legality of it. I was given permission. L, B by whom? His Majesty signed a special law, permitting our marriage. She looked at me with expectation. I was thinking if I do have feelings for her. After all, I don't want her to regret her decision. I, I cannot answer at once. It is too big of a leap for me. Cherry is going to do the same. Just remember that I was the first to ask to be your wife. So I should be the main wife. She crossed her arms and nodded in satisfaction. Then there is no helping it. Still, are you sure? It is not something that can be cancelled when you grow tired of it. Do not worry, I had a few months to plan everything for our marriage. Cherry too. L, 
Speaking of whom, why were you fighting? It is your task to understand Tilda. L, wait. You only fought for who is the main wife. That was fast. She taunted me. I have my moments. M.I.D. dear. Can you princess carry me back? She became red like a good tomato. Just like in the old times. Not in this dress. Of course. I looked at the voluptuous naked parts which showed from under the cloak. I am not against it Tilda. L, yet I am. Xera will skin me alive should we return like that. Not to mention your mom will not like it. Mother will be glad to know we will marry. It is not worth mentioning I was unsure of that. Reluctantly she put on her dress but still wanted to be carried back. When we were close to the camp I heard even breaths. She fell asleep and comfortably snuggled to me. The first person to meet us was the overwatch dog. She is wet, and I don't remember her having swimming clothes. X, well. If you've done something inappropriate before the marriage. X, wait a second. R, right. The dumbest was not informed beforehand. Everyone in the universe knows but you are an alien from hell knows where, so having your eyes open does not apply to you. X, well. Well you, after you deliver my lady, go to the pier. Mr. Tyrion is waiting for you there. Good luck, miss. X, I heeded her unexpected advice. Ha, huh? you are finally here. Charlotte was sitting at the wooden pier where ships unload food and materials. When I approached closer, she stood up and covered her mouth with a fan. Oh, the nobles Viscountess Charlotte. N no s stop. It is too embarrassing and weird. See, Cherry, if I got what you are waiting for correctly. She blushed. Jay just say that. I am ready. Ho 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 Tilda. See, Charlotte de Tyrion, will you marry me? SS so embarrassing. She covered her reddened face with both the fan and the sleeves. Your answer? Why why yes, you 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 you. In a moment she crossed the gap between us and the crying girl hid her face in my chest. When the initial tears stopped flowing, can I be selfish? Were you not? Of course. I did not voice it. As long as you want it, whether you want to be protected like a princess, I will protect you with my armor and guns. Whether you want to show how brave and confident you are, I will support you. Sob whether you want to show your vulnerable side. I will be right beside you, and I will always shower you with love. Soon I had the second sleeping girl in my arms. This one is a bit lighter as she has less difference in size between her torso and her waist. In the hut I put down Charlotte right beside Lily. I want to be carried like those two Tilda. X, then come here. R, to hell with it. Pick me up and carry around. I was dumbfounded but still picked her up muscular. You know what? I'd better tell how perverted you are to Madam. X, and also aboard. She grabbed my braid and started pulling it. She did not put any force into doing it, she just showed the intent. Fine, fine. We can go and enjoy Lily's bosom together. Slap Sarah lightly slapped me. Joke about me how much you want but don't ye f dare talk about my lady in such a way. She has so much more good sides to her. Why do I even say it to someone who knows her so well? X, ha ha ha. Thank you for the compliment. Are we returning, or you want to be carried for a bit longer? She made herself comfortable in my arms and shook her shoulders. I guess there is no helping it. The wind's side story of Withered Blossom No. 8. The tribute the next morning after my little test we were once again on the move. I was finally affected by the desert's heat and barely held myself together to avoid melting. From a side I must be looking like an overheated fox. I am, but at least I am yet to liberate myself from the last layer of protection against the dan. We were making only a couple of stops per day to drink. Now I fully understood why half of the animals were carrying water instead of goods. When we crossed that ridge there should be a small oasis. Just hold a bit longer. The warrior patted my head, after his words I recognized where we are going. Not that they can put the blame on me. Guys, there are dead bodies. 
The priest found my handiwork faster than I anticipated. I will take note of that. The caravan did not stop to look at the dead and passed by. In the sand there were still traces and holes of shells and bullets. Poor souls. The desert claimed its tribute once again. S. What do you mean? Many caravans disappear just like that. The monsters, the bandits, the nomads, the rivals. W. I looked at the dead. Their expressions of fear, forever engraved on their faces, their bodies, shredded with bullets, and their unspoken contempt. I feel so disgusted. They were too weak to survive, that is why they failed. You can't always be the strongest. It is not the guarantee of survival. W. I did not respond. Instead, I thought what else can I find? If they are just a bunch of nobodies, then there might be something else worthy of my attention. V2CH87. A little tea party the four of us were sitting on a towel in front of the house. The matter of our marriage with Lilith and Charlotte was resolved quickly. Catalina fainted after hearing the news but quickly accepted it. From the friend's mother she turned into mother-in-law. Also, I myself was turned into assistant professor for her lessons. Not too big of a price in comparison with the benefits. Lilith showed me that she already has a white wedding dress and the rings, and is now fully prepared for the marriage. Charlotte, when asked about the permission of her father, showed me a black dress with veil and a letter where the duke tearfully begged to care for his baby girl, as well as left a blank check where we would need to write down the required sum. Ever since the initial matter of will we marry was dealt with, Lily and Cherry started wearing their wedding dresses every day, despite the fact that we are yet to have the official ceremony. Another major concern regarding our lives, the housing was solved as well. Better to say the case self-solved as after the blueprints were completed the construction was over in a matter of a week. As it turned out, I bought too much materials and hired too many workers. From the leftover lumber we not only built an additional house but even made a fence and a swing. Yet, I still have no idea why did I order so much for such a small project. The girls were drinking tea while I daydreamed. Not that they have anything else to do. Out of us only Xera is capable of chores. Lilith and Charlotte are both noble girls and were never taught how to wash the dishes or cook, while I am. Well, I can do some things but I feel like it will be easier to find a maid for it. I even have a prospect. Our defense is my ship which is anchored near the pier. The radar coverage had to be replaced with visual detection at least for the time of the radar's maintenance. So it was not surprising that our little tea party on the grass was interrupted by a pair of cheeky wyverns. They were just flying above in circles, like hawks or like vultures. Miss Delight, do you agree that the sun is blocked a bit? A figure in white dress said that with a bit of irritation. Evan, do you think it is appropriate to ask our pets to leave? C. P. F. 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 What pets? Lilith choked. Indeed. Charlotte, do you consider those wyverns as pets? Of course I am. Look at how pretty they are. As the future Madame of Windsor family I must have something unique, or the other ladies will not understand me. See, we are quite an exotic case just by ourselves. Lilith noted the most obvious thing. We have the husband with no common sense whatsoever. I take my thoughts back. Meanwhile, the wyverns dived and prepared to attack. Bang bang bum 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 boo boo bum a number of brass casings fell on the grass. The wyverns had to evade the AA fire and landed nearby in confusion. Cherry stood up and nonchalantly approached. Hello Peter. Hello, Judah. How are you Tilda? The wyverns appeared to be astonished by her impudence. In fact, they were so astonished that they did not move. When they finally understood what was going on, I smiled at them and aimed the main guns. Neither of them resisted being patted by Charlotte and after she was done, they quickly flew away, as far away as they could. When I returned I was met with a glare. I picked up some shortcakes and broke off a piece. Say triple underscore. Triple H chomp say triple underscore. 
Triple H on soon Lilith returned to her cuddling mood. Charlotte and Lilith were both satisfied. Meanwhile, in the distance my radar picked up some signals. Their path exactly crossed the sky above the ship so I opened fire. Bang 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 the formation was too spread out so the shells did nothing, but the closer the objects are, the higher the chances of hitting. Bum 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 when radar guided both those guns joined, the objects started dropping much faster. B R R R T T T T T T and when the full firepower was released, as well as manpads. The now recognized swarm of wyverns became scarcer than expected. Though I had some issues targeting them when they approached too close, as there was just not enough gun mounts to track them all. With colossal losses the wyverns bypassed the AA despite the concentrated fire and approached my little house. The wind's side story of withered blossom no nine shadows on the sand we set up a camp in the oasis where my targets were. Even some of the things they had remained under a cause of viewing the stars I separated from the caravan ears. By that time, I had all aircraft but one group of fighters prepared. Everything was loaded with external fuel tanks and had its course planned. Nothing in this desert moves faster than my aircraft so my plan is simple, find something that can keep me amused for longer than 10 minutes. Be it another target practice, or something that can be studied. Even with all of my tricks I spent too much time launching and one of the recent launches confirmed that I am being searched for. Want to play? I want to play too. I started moving around the oasis while making stops only to launch the aircraft that still were occupying the flight deck. Fuji, where are you? S, say something, kid. B whatever. Come on. Don't get lost. The warrior walked right past me. With a slight help of magic, I became invisible enough not to be spotted in a bush. When I slipped through the expanding line of search I returned to the camp and sat by the campfire. Almost an hour later they returned with grim faces. Ani-chan, where were you? The expressions they had were worth waiting and hiding. WWWWW where were you? S, but. Ark. chan I was hurry. E. U. 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 R. I was crying but nobody heard me. You, 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 you. The beginning of scolding turned into comforting me. Meanwhile, a report came in. V2CH88. The bride's special training Mr. Light. L, everything is alright. I gulped. I managed to take down the half of the wyverns. They started gathering into a larger group so I decided to kill some sparrows with a cannon. Requiem, Light I train. Kaboom something flew into the air, from the direction of the harbor. It was a part of the white turret which exploded due to the malfunction. My stern started rapidly sinking. The damage was extensive but controllable. The majority of stern bulkheads were intact and were automatically closed. I was not exactly happy with what happened but the flooding was contained, almost with no damage. A gaping hole in the stern and a list do not count. Boom 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 the shells whistled above us but neither of them hit the wyverns. However, the beasts that were close to the shells were squashed by the pressure wave but it was not the majority of them. I deployed the weaponry. By the time I was ready to fire, the radars ordered to live forever so I had to resort to the optical guidance. Bang bang bum 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 brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
This is so awkward, Evan. Did you lose all of your intellect on winning the main wife position? See, yes. Great. So, my co-wife, how about you act accordingly to your social position and listen to me? I raised an eyebrow. I am listening. While they are gone we should decorate the house and prepare everything for the ceremony. After all, our dear Delight will not marry us for the coming years unless we put her in front of everything prepared. See, I see your point. Speaking of which, how are we going to have the ceremony? I have no idea how it is done and when either of us will marry her. I saw my aunt's marriage and I have people who can organize anything and I have a good idea how to avoid arguments between us. Hey, Evan, how about we hold our marriage ceremonies simultaneously? See, I just... Just how would it even work? We are supposed to... Kiss her. I... I can't. Too embarrassing. See, how are we even supposed to kiss her? It is so... Weird. We were thinking if there is a good way to do everything. Miss Delight will be awkward around us so we decided not to act all lovey-dovey with her. Knowing our husband, she will pamper us whenever she can and we both are fine with being close to her. We will be inseparable. However, I and Charlotte have that one little issue. We feel goosebumps just from touching each other. Miss Delight will no doubt be concerned with it and we both agreed that we need to become used to each other. We were hugging each other, talking and even tried kissing each other's cheeks. After an entire day of special training we grew used enough to each other that we managed to stay in the same house without having arguments. Also, we managed to keep peaceful and happy smiles despite hugging each other. The fact that we are not having an actual reason to dislike each other or compete helps as well. We both love the same person who has enough love to care for the both of us. Charlotte and I were discussing the new fashion trends when the door opened. Oh my, do I interrupt anything? Miss Delight giggled. No, we were just performing our usual bonding. Cherry gave some random excuse to dispel Miss Delight's apparent doubt. I kissed Charlotte's cheek. Our husband's delighted expression was worth it. But I still need to wash my lips with soap. The Wind's Side Story of Withered Blossom Note 10 Shepherd When I discovered a point of interest I faced a dilemma. I can try asking the caravaneers to deliver me there, but it will also mean uncovering some of my plans, or, I can try directing them there indirectly. Vroom what was that? P. One of the things that saved us back then? S. S. Why I made a sharp turn and dived, for white reppers followed it from the skies. Tra ta 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 tra ta ta vroom 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 we need to help it. P. Bait taken. The bomber set general direction to the point of interest and soon disappeared out of sight, with four fighters on its tail. The people did not hesitate and turned towards the target and even accelerated as much as they could without hurting the caravan. Fuji, why are you smiling so much? P, damn it, birdie tilde, birdie tilde. Better be insane than explain everything. The caravaneers were weirded by my action yet soon forgot that something like that happened. To avoid them losing the course I had to return the flying circus a number of times. The problem is that I have to show that this is not a game of some sort. Vroom tra ta ta ta. After another burst, Swai I started rapidly rolling and entered a controlled spin. Oh my god. S. Tra ta ta ta. The bomb released a smoke trail and miraculously stopped spinning before once again disappearing in the distance with its escort. When we were close enough, I arranged the bomber to fly in a straight line behind the scenes and release a trail of smoke. This will be for the caravan's guidance, and for motivation. Vroom, the fighters flew in the distance, as if they were returning home from a hunt. Now, I only need to wait. V2CH89 Increasing chaos Recently I noticed how Lily and Cherry became much closer. They hug each other and kiss each other's cheeks. They never did anything like that before. At first I wondered why would they want to do it but by looking at how happy they look. I wonder if I will be abandoned for the sake of Yuri marriage between them. Are you sure they did not hit their heads? 
Have you checked them? Xero was as astonished as was I. I did not but I am sure they were not injured in the process. You don't worry that they went crazy. X, let us hope they are just becoming over-friendly. Hope, damn it. Ever since my lady started fooling around with Mr. Tyrion, she almost ignored me. X, oh my. What a poor knight you are. Don't make me cry, you bully. We were the closest people for the past four years. My lady was barely holding back the vomit just after being a kilometer away from Mr. Tyrion. She hated her that much. X. I guess love makes both war and peace possible. Damned love. Hey. God almighty. When will my spring arrive? X. Wear the uniform and approach a girl. I have no doubt you can seduce any woman with your masculine charm. And here I thought I will hear something unique. X. Master. A girl approached us. Oh. Try this lady. Here comes your spring, Xera. Master. A girl in frilly black and white dress impatiently shook my shoulder. What is it, Francis? I brought my assigned maid during the business trip. While initially she was assigned by the academy, when I asked her if she wants to come with me, she literally carried two suitcases out of her room. She had everything pre-packed. Mistress Lilith and Mistress Charlotte want to try cooking. I did my best. F. Don't tell me. Yes. The kitchen is in danger. I rushed to the kitchen but I was too late. Ten minutes later. Bon appetite. My fiancé smiled. In front of me were placed two plates with purple charcoal dishes. Francis stood behind them and prayed as if I am already dead. Even Xera looked at me with pity. My weak attempt of avoiding the food poisoning was countered with two gentle hands that pushed me back into the chair and pushed two spoons and plates. I chose Lilith's dish and ate a spoon. It tasted as good as it looked. Lily, I will be honest. Never approach the kitchen without strict supervision of Francis. Yes. L. The second dish was weirdly better. It is still not yummy but it is not a complete failure. Cherry, you as well. Do not cook without Francis. But you liked my dish more? She smiled. Amongst the worst options this one is better. Ho 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 Tilda. You heard that, Lily? And you were saying my genius does not apply to cooking. Whatever makes the child happy. After I drank an entire teapot of sweet tea made by Francis the first went to the harbour. I was still not in the best of my condition but at least the water was pumped out of the turret barbet and the holes were welded. The 24 hour cool down when even the worst damage is repaired had not applied to this case. The damage is repaired but very slowly. In the first days since explosion only the holes were repaired and the gun turret remained as tall as it was. While I was crying over the damage, a ship appeared on the radar. Just in case something goes wrong I checked the boons. Ding you received 7 silver coins, 29 upgrade points, 1 skill point HMS Delight, BC, mod, 1986 retrofit, accuracy, 51 hundredths, plus 10, reload, 51 hundredths recoil, 10 one hundredths machinery, 50-50 guns, 50-25 equipment, 67-0 Requiem, LVL-5, Memento Mori, LVL-10, Lydite Train, LVL-10, on activation, 10s reload for next salvo, the following salvo has 30s reload, can be activated every 40s, on activation, minus 25% chance of breakdown and flash fire. When this ship is hit by an attack that would otherwise sink it, 25% chance to completely heal this ship. Duration, 30s, can be activated every 2 minutes. On activation, fires a salvo of helidite shells with higher chance to set fire on target and deal critical damage. Has 10% chance of critical malfunction. A Sea Lynx helicopter was prepared for takeoff, right when it prepared to leave the helipad. Its tail rotor hit a cable. I started to wonder if the fire extinguishers were included exactly for that reason. The second helicopter was not luckier. I could recognize the ship only after it entered the visual range. It was a messenger ship of the kingdom. 
The ship docked at the pier and a group disembarked. There was a familiar face presented. Oh my, your grace, how nice of you to honor us with your visit. Yes, yes, how is Charlotte? D, good day to you as well. She is in the house, relaxing. He blushed when I reminded him of the basics of etiquette. Can you guess the point of my visit? D. You wish to see how the bride is doing? He nodded. However, that is not the only reason. Do you remember the grumpy old man, sitting on an overcurated chair? I couldn't help smiling. I managed to convince him to allow the marriage ceremony to be in the palace. D. Great. Is that all? Almost. The ceremony is scheduled to take place in two weeks. He passed me a letter. The letter contained a lot of interesting things and was written by Cherry. She has everything planned by days. And in the end of the latter was postscriptum. Miss Delight, my dear, if you are reading this, remember, there is no running away from the marriage. Pack the luggage. I had no choice but to fire the boilers. V2CH90. King size preparations. Two sailors were chilling on the deck of the kingdom's flagship. They rested their arms on the wooden board of the vessel and looked into the distance. When I enlisted they said that only the castle ship is larger. It surely was. A monster made of finest wooden clad in thick iron plates. The castle ship was the vessel that made the entire world dread. No port was safe if it arrived. No ship was strong enough to oppose it. Yet, our gar in a mere month war with the most powerful naval nation of the world was over, on its own territory, despite the immense amount of ships. But what was even more terrifying, is that what achieved this impossible feat was the ultimate monster. Nobody knows what is below its armor but some heard there is no wood. Nobody knows how it can move without sails but those who met it know that there are no ships capable of challenging its speed. And everybody knows of its power, capable of crushing any and all defenses. The Leviathan arrived to the capital and its thunderous roar echoed throughout the busy streets of the city and the vast space of the seaport. This time, however, the Leviathan disappeared in the blink of an eye. As I was saying. I have no idea why would this gear be not considered as festive uniform. Miss Delight, give me an hour and I will find you something actually worthy of being a wedding dress. See, sorry but no. Sorry but yes. See, my lady, can't we just leave them in their own world? X, I wish we could. L, the official reason for me to walk with my gear spawned is that it is my trademark full parade dress. The actual reason, however, is that I am yet to do something with my poor turret being blasted. It was repaired to the level when nobody can tell that it is just an empty shell but it is still better to avoid showing that I lost a quarter of my firepower and that I still have my stern submerging. When we showed up at the gates of the palace, the guard were not even surprised to see the four of us. We were just led to the guest room where the king was already waiting. You showed up faster than I expected. Uh, what is this? W, oh my, it is my weaponry. Hide IT at once. He looked so terrified that he almost had a heart attack. I guess the rumors reached here quicker than I anticipated. Cannot do. Just console yourself with the thought that they are not loaded. Mostly. Why every time you show up something goes like this? Why do you need to create me trouble all the time? The king sat in resignation. So, when will our glorious marriage start? You ask me that, despite arriving a week earlier? W. Well, yes. After all, it is not me who rushes things. If we will not rush you, dear, we will be brides for the rest of our lives. L. Ha ha. I may be slow to uptake but be sure I am not that slow to be sitting without doing anything once I got what is going on. Cherry and Lily nodded, and clearly hummed ha. Ah, are you done? Don't tell me you will stay here for the time of waiting. W, but of course we will. And thus everything was settled. One week later, twelve hours until W hour, we were sitting at a dining table. Everyone expect for Xera. She is considered to be a servant, 
We had to follow the rules because it was not a common table but the table of royal dining room and we had to share it with the royal family. Most of the space was empty. The queen had a quarrel with the king and refused to sit together. The princesses were attending social gatherings. The princes were, well, young age, hormones, cute maids. Many empty rooms and all servants are busy in the throne room. Only the king himself and the crown prince Eclair were sitting with us. I wish we had someone to talk to. Those women. Why can't you all just decide what you want? The king started murmuring something but when I looked at him he immediately looked down into his plate. Eight hours until W hour. Put it over there. I said over there. Charlotte was arranging the last decorations. She wanted everything to be done her way. Of course. I was not exactly interested in the feng shui of party decorations so I left it all to the ones who understand it. It will looks better here. Bring them here. Lilith had her own idea of how everything should look. Four hours until W hour. The first guests already started arriving to the palace. The highest rank nobles would never miss such a wedding where the king himself let use his throne room for the marriage of somebody who is not from the royal family. It is the one time in the life opportunity for them to sway me into their circles. Or so they think. Two hours until W hour. Ha 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 Tilda. It is a nice joke. Thank you very much for sharing it. Oh my, please. Excuse me. I barely left the hell. I can talk like a noble for a long time but they, my sanity keeps stepping closer to the brink when I talk to the nobles. My eyes occasionally glanced at the snacks table but if I were to head there, I will be swarmed with the nobles in a matter of seconds. It looks like you are having fun. I turned around. Behind me was the girl in glasses. She leisurely swayed a glass of wine. Can a child even drink it? Can. Okay. Is there something you wanted to talk about? Oh, right. There was a thing I wanted to tell you. Jokes aside. You did a fine job. I almost feel proud looking at you. You are still slow and sluggish but the progress was made. I would have never thought stuff like that can even happen. Thank you. You are welcome. Be grateful I attend this party. Otherwise I would never care about such little things. Is that all why you came here? Aside from junk food, of course I also came here just to look at you. Choke. Mages told me to come for their own reasons. Well, it was nice seeing you. Bye bye. What was that? Just what did she say? Ten minutes until W hour. Now, dear guests, welcome the bride. S. The Toastmaster was finishing the jokes and stories, and went to the wedding part. I led my two brides hand in hand. Lilith was to my right, as the main wife, and Charlotte was to my left, claiming that I am walking to her right as I love her more. Both children were happy so big sister D mentally teared. We stopped in front of a priest. The ceremony began. The wind's side story of withered blossom no eleven. A huntress trial I made the aircraft flap their wings to stay airborne but it is still worth it. In front of me was a pyramid-like structure which seemingly grows out of the sand. Is this a tomb? It must be. The ancient rulers were as conceited as the current ones are. W. What are we waiting for, guys? This place must have its own secrets. Otherwise that bird would not lead us here. The dwarf readied his crossbow and went forward. I wondered if I should stay above and wait for them to finish the clean up but the scout gently pushed me forward. Don't worry, we'll protect you. S. As my pool of options was reduced to two, I summoned the flight deck and prepared to land the aircraft. After all, the others already went inside and I need to make sure I will not have 116 piles of scrap waiting for me here. We moved through a hallway which was stretching deeper and deeper underground. For the first 300 meters we met no resistance. For the next 200 meters we were slowed down by the bones lying everywhere. Some of the skeletons were holding weapons and some had pieces of armor remain on their bodies. The priest chanted something at one of the skeletons. They are not cursed, but they still died here. P. 
I did not worry about it too much. Heck, I did not even summon the Najnata. If I am to waste my effort on this much then I might miss the actual fight. 400 meters later we saw a faint light at the end of the hallway. Finally, after walking for 1 kilometer 17 meters we exited the hallway and entered a domed hall with a huge pond in its center, and the water was wavering. V2CH91 All is well that ends well Hua. That was something. I sat on the marble steps that lead to the inner garden of the palace. I feel like my life span shortened. Lilith joined me in my endeavor. You two are too tender for the Bowman gatherings like this. Now, imagine that in the future you will be having the same amount of attention. Don't worry, I will teach you all you need to know Tilda. Ho 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 Tilda. Charlotte spread out a handkerchief and joined us in sitting on the steps. Thank you for the offer. I kindly refuse it. What you faced was just the tip of an iceberg called socialite talk. See, indeed, the weather is wonderful today. If it was not for the ceremony, I might have been absent right now. What do you mean? Oh, could it be you were invited somewhere else? An old woman covered her mouth with her palm. She was the NTH person that talked to me and it kind of makes me sick. Oh my, it would be a wrong assumption. The sea is fair and it is such a waste to stay on land for so long. Ha ha ha, I see. Might it be you have nobody to invite you? In this case, how about I invite you somewhere? You must have never seen the capital's entertainments. Almost immediately I heard a stifled giggle from behind. Oh my. How very kind of you but allow me to refuse. I would rather not waste my time on seeing a village passage. Madame, forgive me but it would be better not to be rude to the people you are talking to. The old woman said that a bit louder than before, thus causing the attention to shift. It is not like I was the instigator. And this is what I get for my consideration? The gossip grew stronger. What is the world is going on? Charlotte appeared on the scene. Madam Windsor, I am sorry for the commotion but your, um, husband is being rude to me. The scene was only becoming more biased as the time went on. But of course she is. A no-name countess from a countryside dares taking her time for nothing. I heard enough of this talk and I can say for sure that Madam is being very tiresome for someone who is so appreciating of your past achievements so as to dedicate some time for you. The old woman became the new subject of the gossips, not to mention that we have no time for invitations of common rabble. See, still, I would very much want to avoid those gatherings. You might want to but unlike you, I am social butterfly and if I skip even one of the major gatherings, then I will be a laughing stock. Not to mention that Lily is newly wed and there will be a mountain of invitations for her, now that she is. See, Huuuuu, of all the times it had to be now. L, delight of Windsor, your oath to the gods and the crown is accepted. Are you willing to take her grace Charlotte de Tyrion, Viscountess of Iden and the heir to the Duchy of Tyrion as your legal wife? The priest was done with his sermon and now came the climax. Yes. Are you willing to take her highness Lilith de Marslia, the fourth princess of Marslia as your legal wife? Wait a moment. I looked at Lily, she had her eyes as round as were mine. I glanced into the crowd and saw Catalina. Our eyes met and she showed me thumbs up. Then I glanced at the king, or better say glad as he was sweating when he showed me his thumb. Well, the surprise regalia aside, everything is fine. I am willing to take Lily as my legal wife. I had to hurry with clearing the awkward pause. You can kiss the wife. S. I will have a bit of a talk with the king about the importance of having the children kept safe and helping them when they are targeted by murderers. I still wonder how I managed to kiss you both so fast. Don't mention IT. It is too embarrassing. Both of them were striving to plug my mouth first. Bang the door was kick opened and frothed Xera showed up. How did it go? You bet those bastards have no way of refusing me. X. How very nice of you to offer your sincere compensation. I smiled. Everything for my dear daughter Tilda. 
The king shivered. You've got a nice catch, my lady. I smiled at Catalina. I tried. Hard. She faintly smiled. Madame, my lady wishes to speak to you. Xera sneaked up. The king examined the knight. What is it? Now that I think of it, a royalty needs to be guarded by a royal knight. I will send you the best candidates. W. Oh my, what a good man you are, your majesty. To offer this humble knight to be promoted right to the royal knight. I clapped my hands and smiled. You have no options. What I meant is. W. Oh my, even to make her a senior knight? What a compassionate heart you have, your majesty Tilda. I cut off all his escape routes and the further he goes, the wilder my imagination will be. Why yes Tilda, congratulations with your promotion. Miss? W. While I wish it was done with my own strength, at least I was passing the trials fair and square. X. Congratulations Tilda. Yes. Yes, don't you even think I will let you lecture my lady in the broad daylight? X, the windside story of Withered Blossom No. 12, a huntress trophy I was not the only one who noticed the weird vibration of the water surface, the dwarf loaded his huge crossbow, the warrior took cover behind his shield, the scout prepared to pull the boatstring, and the priest started chanting buffs. I launched a foxfire to see if I can observe something unusual. It was normal water. Then I measured the size of the area. Despite its large size, the hall was too small to launch aircraft. Now I stood in a very tricky position. I am the last person supposed to fight in such a closed space yet I have no way of leaving. After all, I want to see what will happen. Bang bang I fired 127 mm ASW shells. I'd rather trigger the response right now than wait for no reason and let the enemy prepare. That did the trick and a dragon-like animal emerged. Rawr. Judging by its movements it was deafened by the shells. The arrows and bolts of the caravaniers did a lot of damage to it so it has little to no protection. Yet it does not look like they will take it down before they die. Bang bang boo 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 bum I sent a torrent of he shells and the beast was killed. While everybody was still confused I made my way to the other side of the hall and found a door there. In a small room I found a chest and inside of it was a crown. W where were you? S. I just looted. I showed the crown. Can you appraise it? The scout gave the crown to the dwarf. This is not a dwarven work. Might be worth asking the mages in the town. Right now we have a more important question. B. Everyone looked at me. This time even I cannot feel my way out of here. V2CH92. Even bad things can do good. The following days after the marriage were a complete chaos. My life was not becoming easier. On the contrary. I was constantly busy. We were receiving entire bags of invitations to the gatherings, tea parties and performances. Of course, we can leave the capital whenever we want, after I heat the boilers which were cold since our arrival. If there is an issue with the steam engine then it will no doubt be its long starting. The turret was repaired so while the finishing touches were done, the ship could be deployed. I mean, the gear can be unsummoned. It is not too comfortable to sleep with guns everywhere. Just when will we return? The only person who perfectly understood how I felt was Lily, being a newfound princess all of a sudden, made her the second largest topic in the noble society. The first, of course, was our marriage which did not help decreasing the attention. Please, bear with it a couple more days. I need some time to heat the boilers. Why not or back? X. Do try it. It will be the same as trying to move a fully loaded carriage with a stick. Does it even need to be so complicated? X. It does. And she ran out of the counter-arguments. I went out of the guest bedroom where we were settled in, and wandered around the palace. When I was passing by a door I heard a conversation inside. They are so cool. They defeated the empire so fast. Yes, if only I had a chance to meet with one of them. 
two maids were gossiping. While eavesdropping is bad, it can't be helped if it is accidental. I already passed by the door when I heard an even more interesting thing. I heard the admiral personally commanded the defeat of the castle ship. To think he will be so ingenious. From that moment I had a good reason to eavesdrop. After all, I am a bit connected to this case. From what I understood, the main fleet, that did not even reach the battle, has returned and the sailors claim themselves to be the ones who did all the job. With the king and government's silence the situation was not clarified. While there are some people who don't trust their babble, a lot of people still believe that I was just delivering the message of the victory, and the fleet was the victor. I checked the situation of the guns. All eight of them were ready for work but the white turrets systems were still not powered. Not that it forbids me the use of it. I wondered if I should fire a few blanks to remind everybody of my existence but then I had a brilliant idea. Stop. His Majesty holds an important council meeting. He ordered not to let anyone in. A knight stopped me at the doors of the throne room. Oh my. In this case. How should I announce the presence of mine? Would His Majesty like a salute of mine, or an artillery bombardment? The knight slowly backed away inside the room. When the door opened again I was gestured to enter. What business do you have to interrupt me? Why can't you just leave me alone, for God's sake? W. Boom 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 I apologize for the language I shall use. Why the f did you allow that bastard of an admiral to claim that he did all the job? Or you suddenly thought I am too far away and too deaf so as not to hear the gossip? I copied Catalina's smile of demon lord. What do you want? The king held his head. I propose a combined exercise with your majesty's fleet. The exercise where every soul will understand who beaten the sea out of the empire. Just saying Tilda. Just saying, damn it, as if you gave me a choice here. And could you please stop firing those cannons every time you want to coerce me? W, but they are so effective at it. You immediately stop being stubborn and agree. When I returned to the bedroom I was met with inquisitive glare. What happened? They all asked. What do you mean Tilda? My dear, did you fire those guns just for the sake of self-amusement? L, O, that, it was. To grease the wheels of thinking. Delight, the next time you have a vagary like this, tell me. My dad will make his majesty think much faster, and will not cause everybody's ears to rupture. See, but they could not, I fired from such a huge distance Tilda. The next time you do this, at least warn us. X, how? Huh? When you have such a stupid idea, first come find us and think this through. Easy, right? X, instead of keeping clearing my fault, I focused on the preparations. I loaded a few old men with 14 shells. I needed to move the shells from the other turrets to the white turret which has no ammo. I still have more than 400 shells but the explosion made my stockpile a bit more limited. I just need to wait until the king calls for me. V2CH93 Fury, wrapped in mischief two days later I had my boilers heated and ready to go but I still had to decide if I want to stay in the capital and wait until the king's government approves the military exercise which will no doubt be the greatest disgrace to their fleet, currently the strongest one in the known world. I can go home right now if I want to but after hearing the news, the girls were hesitating to urge me. That is how I came to this stalemate. An exciting story. What does it have to do with me? I placed my bet on the girl, in glasses, hoping that she will increase the speed of bureaucracy. There is something that can be done, right? You should have more experience with the Byzantine bureaucracy than me. I do have it but I see no reason to help you. She sipped tea and ignored my existence. Is there something I can offer you to make you change your mind? She smirked. Tell me. Well, well. Don't think you will be able to run away from your offer. I want you to promise to do me a favor when the time comes. It is fishy. She only smirked and no longer acknowledged my presence so I left her alone. Just when I remembered that she told me nothing about what to do. 
I pulled the door handle but the doors were already closed. After I returned to the bedroom, the butler came and gave me a message. I am ordered to come to the throne room tonight. The word ordered must be there to show that it is still the king who orders around. Not that it works like that. So, the council suddenly had some free time to discuss your suggestion? Charlotte had a suspicion. Is it so weird? They have every meeting planned a week ahead. No matter how important you are, they at the best will discuss your issue after making you wait for a week. Even daddy cannot make those bald snobs work faster than they are. See, I guess I will have another mystery to uncover. No more uncover and no more mystery. I want to go home as soon as possible. L, was it yesterday you said we might wait for some time until you settle your issues? It was today I received another bag of invitations, to every one of which I had to write a refusal. L, and nobody helped you? She nodded. I wondered what I can do to help my wife but for now I had to solve the council meeting. When it was the time to go, I kissed my wife's cheeks and headed to the throne room. Inside of the room were two dozens of men sitting at a large table. Every one of them had a stack of papers. When I entered, I was glared at with a murderous intent similar to the demon king himself after he was insulted and mocked right into his face. I sat on the opposite to the king side of the table and the glare became even more intense. Creak the door opened again and a small figure in nightgown entered. W. Shut up. The girl in glasses shamelessly entered the room and put a pillow beside the king's chair. She sat there but her head didn't even peek from behind the tabletop. Now, let's discuss the idea of yours. How do you even plan to conduct this exercise? W. First we will simulate a fleet battle. I would not be against having live targets included. Then we will simulate a coastal raid. Your Majesty. I doubt it will be of any benefit to our fleet. One of the councillors voiced his objections the next second after I finished talking. Then will be it of benefit if I remind everyone who sign you a peace treaty. You are just trying to defile the glory of our navy. The council exploded in murmuring. Why should I care? You can find another light to hush it up. While I was mocking the councillors, the king leaned to his side. The two whispered something and after the king nodded, he straightened his back. I have no problem with you showing off, if you are willing to accept one condition. W. Woe to the vanquished. To which the girl in glasses giggled. Can you please shut up while I am talking? W. I only smiled. If you are willing to make the fleet battle at least look like our navy can do something, then you can do whatever you want with the raiding, and claim any laurels you deem necessary. The king looked like he is sure I will accept it. How many ships can I sink before it is accepted as my victory? None. W. Then I guess I will raid to my heart's content. What mansions and fortresses are not necessary? W. Wait. W. Too late Tilda. I flew out of the throne room before anybody could stop me. The only thing I could hear from behind was the booming laughter of the girl in glasses who was really enjoying this. V2CH94. Just as the next few days after the council I did not hear anything notable, the life in the palace was as slow paced as before. However, the gossip about the fleet's achievements died out completely. Some people from the fleet even disavowed their statements, and some asked to resign. I just wonder what will happen to them? If you won't cancel that exercise of yours, then they will not be let to flee like rats. If we are to be ashamed, then I want them to feel the same as do I. The king clenched his fists. Oh my! How straightforward! Miss! Could you please? Oh, thank you very much. I sipped another cup of Yorkshire tea. Of course, the tea, the maids, and the king's company were not here for no reason. He was trying his best to coax me. I might not be particularly angry but it will be a disgrace to me and my efforts if I was to back down without at least having his majesty shout I am sorry from the balcony in a woman's underskirt, which he kindly refused to do. Have you changed your mind? W. About what? Well. The exercise. 
the marriage with Michael. W. How dare you suggest something so inappropriate to the married woman? It was not the first time he asked such a question, so I already was reacting with humor, which one of them? He was not too worried as well, I guess the longer you spend your time with someone, the more they become opened, thank you, Shu Omanga, both, I guess, I am serious, W, still, the answer remains the same, I sipped the tea, can you at least be lenient, W, the victis, and it means, W, the vanquished are to suffer and be grateful for what they received, for the terms can always become worse, don't teach me politics, even you are less of an evil than the politics, W, thank you, is it fine that you will be firing at hay targets, we placed a lot of them in the exercise area, we even invited foreign ambassadors, can you please only devastate the shore and leave our fleets on alone, W, nope, then how about you leave and let me work, W, but if you keep entertaining me, I might change my mind. Bring in the sweets. W. I walked out of the king's cabinet only in the evening but I now have some useful information. My sweet stomach is infinite or at least the size of my fuel tank. During my evening stroll through the garden I saw the girl in glasses. Recently I see her more frequently. It might be connected to me living in the palace but I feel like prior to the wedding she was not everywhere. When I approached her, she just glanced at me and returned to whatever she was doing. She was sitting on a towel on the grass. I sat on a bench nearby. She was just ignoring me and was drawing something on the soil. Even after 10 minutes she was still sitting there and I decided to ask her what she is doing but she stood up simultaneously with me and walked away. The curiosity took better of me and I looked at the drawing. Idiot, seriously, it was a bit disappointing. My mood was worsened a bit but please ignore the slander that I shouted and sworn so loudly that some bird flocks were flying out of the palace territory. When I returned, I dived into Lilith's bosom. It is deep enough to be considered a pool. So, you like Lily more than me? A dreadful voice came from behind but before I could unglue my face from the skin in frilly dress, I was pushed even deeper and felt something soft pushed against the back of my head. Should we leave them? X. I guess we should. Can you tell Julie, palace maid, to warm the bath for them? F. No problem. X. When I applied some force to freeing my head. I felt the something soft pushed against the back of my head becoming softer and warmer, and my braid being caressed. So, there is no way we are letting her go now, right? L, still, we need to go wash ourselves. We must not let the Miss Maid's efforts be wasted. C, then how about we just wash together? L, indeed, the bath is large enough. Francis already returned and prepared towels and soap. Hey, how about you join us? L, I am honored, mistress, but I don't dare doing it without master's permission. I showed my thumb. Then it is settled. L, all I can say is that small is justice. Only Xera was absent for the full collection. V2CH95. Raise the anchor. Battle cruiser is plotting its course. Good news. The new chapter is here and soon V2 will be finished. I slept well, despite being tortured for a few hours. When I woke up I saw on the radar that there are ships in the harbor, and they are preparing to move. The exact data is not available but at least the search radar gave some information before dying. I shook three sleeping girls which pinned me to the bed. MMM, dear, kiss me. Lily sleep talked. Wake up, I am Suffolka. Lily sleep hugged me and my face was pushed into. Well, if previously I was trying to breathe in comfortably, now I am trying my best to just breathe. The first to rescue me was Xera. What the hell are you doing? X, good morning to you too. Save me. I managed to turn my head and that was enough to be able to talk. TCH, I will show it only once. She crawled onto the bed and stood on all fours above us. Xera poked Lilith's left under boob and. Maya. 
I was almost thrown off the bed but the buffer of the villainous and the maid prevented the worst outcome. What was that? Charlotte was sitting like a scared wet kitten and wept. Frances only covered herself with a sheet and while we all were in confusion, she dressed herself and by the time we calmed down, we already had our breakfast brought in, the fresh bedclothes were prepared, and all dresses were ready to be worn. Thank you, Frances. You are the best. The maid blushed but stoically stood on standby. When we were dressed and filled with food, I gathered everybody. The kingdom's fleet seems to have moved out. We might be setting sail soon. Pack the stuff, girls. Of course, the first thing I did was searching for the king or the prime minister. The first to be found was the king, who tried to sneak into the dining room before greeting me. Just as I was about to catch him off guard. I had the hem of my cloak gripped, what do you need? It was the girl in glasses, I wanted to know. They did, now go away and stop being an eyesore, don't forget what you promised me. She let go of my cloak and followed the king, as I had no further questions I returned to the bedroom and saw that everything was already prepared. When I glanced at the suitcases and then at my wives, they avoided the eye contact. Unlike Francis, I am the last person to condemn you, said I, as I grabbed my suitcase. At the harbour we walked into a huge group of people, all dressed in different clothes. Those must be the diplomats mentioned by the king. Among those men I saw the duke, and he saw me. Madame, good morning. D, good morning to you. Sir, what is going on? All of the foreign diplomats that were near the capital were invited. Is there a way to bring them to the ship? D. No. If they want to come aboard, then those sacks of fat can climb the board via a rope ladder. I will only carry my skeleton crew. What about me? D. But of course. Weirdly enough, when the diplomats were informed of the demands, they did not refuse to oar in a small boat and climb seven meters. They were too eager to see the ship. I had to wait several hours until they all arrived. Neither of them was let to move a centimeter away from the piece of deck they stood on. Welcome aboard. Neither of you is actually welcome but as long as you behave. There are some rules and they are not to be broken. I have no issues with throwing you out so keep those rules in mind. First, never come outside if you were ordered to stay inside. Second, you can only enter the specified places. If you want to rest. Then help yourselves on the floor. Third, do not touch weapons, valves, machinery, pipes, and actually anything that does not look completely and absolutely like something that can be touched by the likes of you. And finally, unless you want to be turned into a bloody mist, don't climb inside the main guns. You can guess which ones they are. Now, go inside this room and stay there. You can walk around this part of the deck but I bear no responsibility for those who fall off the ship, or end up drenched in seawater. Some diplomats grumbled about the unfair terms but the chance to see the technological marvel, that is me, has overweighed all the issues. After several rings of the bell I started accelerating. Aiga, now, to the even better news. Those who read my joke notes could even remember this topic. I am a bit tired with this novel. It is not hiatus yet but I will decrease the frequency of V3 updates. Meanwhile, those who did not vote for a new novel can do so in the CH90. The votes do affect my decision. Stay tuned. The Wind's Side Story of Withered Blossom No. 13 For whom the bell tolls the interrogation was postponed until we reached the surface. The procrastination kills, in this case almost literally. While I could cover my tracks this way, it would be creating more trouble for myself. What happened there? S. I just wanted to help you, Ani-chan. You were fighting such a scary monster. You all were so cool but... What if... You you are... W what if you got hurt? This does not cancel the fact that you used such a dangerous magic. Not to mention you used some even before the fight started. The scout was angry. I held back the urge to use the tears as my mean of convincing. After all, 
crying all of a sudden will make the situation worse. I am sorry. It was so long since I saw such a large bond. I had this urge to throw something there. Am I a bad girl? I dropped my head and sniffed. W well, you should be more careful. You provoked that sea dragon. Wait, that's not the point. S. Fuji. What kind of a magic did you use to kill the monster? P. Kitsune magic. I proudly showed my fox fires. My demonstration was met with visible skepsis. I never heard of such magic, and I assure you, I lived long enough. The dwarf combed his beard, judging by the length of it, he surely is not young, but for Kitsune it is normal. I stated the obvious. Aha, uh -huh. we never saw such magic but you just say it is so widely spread that it is normal. S. I spread out my two tails. Ani-chan, how many times have you seen a kitsune? I even grabbed both of the tails to put the accent on them. W well. Her facial expression rapidly changed from skepticism to guilt. That makes sense. P. Not that we are done with it. How about we check out this crown? W. The idea was accepted and we headed out to the town. For now. I can sleep at ease. V2CH96. Competitor delight on our way to the exercise area, which was conveniently planned to happen far away from the capital. We steamed into a storm. Huge waves and strong wind are a threat to any ship, unless it's a huge ship and I am surely not on the smaller side. The flag was struggling to keep itself on the flagpole and not fly away. With each wave hit, the ship was pitching up and on the wave crest I was falling down, only to have my bow hit the next wave. My high freeboard saved me from some of the waves and helped me to avoid the glory of inheriting the title of the largest submarine of the RN but I still had some water flooding the deck. I wonder if I have to worry about the shortcuts of the turrets. The not-so-precious cargo barricaded itself inside the crew quarters and agreed to stay there until the storm calms. And I am the one who decides when it happens. The most precious cargo was with me on the bridge. Look at me. I am the captain. I disconnected the manual input of the steering so I had no reason to worry about the blonde in the black wedding dress spinning the steering wheel. Can anybody tell me, why the hell did I have to sit in that booth on top of the mast if you have everything installed here? Xera was surprised to see that I have rangefinders everywhere, not that it would help her. Hey, are those the birds, are those the birds? The watermelon's bearer was sitting with their face glued to the radar screen. What she found was, however, not a bird, and not a plane, and not even a wyvern. It was the silhouette of the repair team that worked on bringing the early warning radar back to life. I had to keep it on even during the repair, just to let my wife be amused. It did not take us long to catch up to the kingdom's fleet. They too were caught in the storm and because of that they had to stop moving. Through the portholes the ambassadors could even see how the raging sea threw small wooden ship up and down. Gods, have mercy on us, for we did nothing wrong. The duke was praying in a corner. You think we are in a trouble? No, they are. He pointed at the ships. Well, he's right, I guess. When we arrived to the exercise area we dropped the anchors and spent three eventful days at the coast. We were playing with a ball and even made a makeshift volleyball court. We spent some time trying to get the suntan. Of course, I did not get any. Lily was safely protected by Xera and had no way of sunbathing for longer than five minutes, Cherry was not even let to escape the safety of the canopy, and the Duke was. Well. It's obvious where, the diplomats too were having fun. Just ignore the screams and shouting, they surely do enjoy themselves, did I not mention that the storm is not over? I was already starting to be bored of the beach life but the kingdom's finest fleet arrived. Their condition was a bit worse than they would like to admit but the exercise started. Only few people could reach this area but for an unknown reason. There was an entire tent town set up nearby and a few free-to-ride carriages circled between the capital and the tent town. I have no idea whom to thank for it but at least we have some spectators. 
Our temporary beach ended up being turned into the observation area but at least we had the best view. The kingdom's fleet prepared to fire a salute. Boom his majesty's flagship holy or fired. What a power. The commentator even managed to make the crowd applause. It was a large 40 meters, exclamation mark slash, ship with one, exclamation mark slash, cannon which was requisitioned from the empire a few decades ago. If I heard correctly, this is the only cannon the fleet has operational. It must be the one that fired at me a long time ago. And now, will our esteemed competitor do anything to greet the public? Now it was the matter of honor. Bang 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 not too much but we'll accept it. Now this is the matter of honor. Boom 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 the next was the task to sink a ship which was conveniently placed near the shore, right besides the beach. Well. It was two ships. For an obvious reason. While the radar was still showing the signs of life I decided to use it. I raised the anchors and gained some distance. Meanwhile, the kingdom's galleys approached the target and shot fire arrows, judging by how the ship started burning right away. It was oiled too much. It is so oiled that an entire royal film formed around it. And now, what will show us our esteemed competitor? A small flash lit on the ship. Everybody was wondering what happened but then, new boom an Exocet anti-ship missile penetrated the wooden hull and landed somewhere inside the forest. What a conveniently placed target. Now I don't even need to search for it. Said I, as I went into the forest, followed by the amazed looks of the public. The wind's side story of withered blossom no 14. The carrier that cried Sandhound. Wake up, wa Fuji. What's wrong? P. Just why can't I wake up properly? Without having somebody shout into my ears. Anichan, I had a nightmare. The priest's face twitched for a second but she still hugged me and patted my back. It looks like the affection levels need to be increased. I looked around and confirmed we are in the middle of nowhere. To my left there is sand. To my right there is sand, to my front, to my back, below me. I only see no sand above me but it is still on me. I hate sand. Why? P. It gets everywhere. I was holding back the urge to temporarily become an exhibitionist. Don't worry, soon we will reach the town. There is a good hot bath. P. Speaking of which, I have no idea where this town is as my patrol schedule was disrupted. We traveled for more than two days and slept only on the backs of the pack animals, only to reach an oasis and rest there properly. I waited until everybody went to sleep and found a good place. Fuji? I heard shouting. I had a thought cross my mind but I decided that it is too early. I prematurely launched another swai and had it land further away. It will try to guide them to the town, just in case. Fuji. Where are you? S. When I sneaked closer to the caravaneers I decided to scare the scout. I creeped closer and closer, and then, you little. Before I could react I had my ears pulled to the sides and almost tied below my chin. I found her. And with this, the scout pulled me by the ears until we reached the camp. Ithurts ithurts ithurts. But I started crying only after we arrived. V2CH97. C. Air, and land after I poked the remnants of the missile a couple of times, and made sure it is not going to come back to life and haunt me forever. I returned to the beach. Meanwhile, I prepared the helicopters for takeoff. Two of them, to make sure at least one might survive. I was pleasantly surprised to see that the helicopter left the launch pad without making me use another fire extinguisher. The second one cleared the pad as well. The helicopter headed to the beach. My plan is to use one of them. The second one, to correct the fire, while this one will be used to get ourselves some nice shots at the mayhem. Ta 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 the crowd dispersed in terror when they saw the black machine approach. I did not fear for our lives, since we are not going to land on the pad. Unless the helicopter collides. We are safe. Let's go. I dragged the reluctant girls inside. Well, 
knowing that I might be the only survivor if it crashes, I definitely am the last person to be concerned about my safety. The second part of the exercise was attacking a coastal village. The kingdom set up two small villages. Even from the distance I clearly saw that there are a lot of people hidden behind the buildings, and everything is ready to burn it. I might make a complaint about the bias of this exercise but, well, am I in any position to do this? The kingdom's fleet approached the village and fired a barrage of fire arrows. The village started burning. Through the optics of the fire correction helicopter I confirmed that most of the damage was done by the burn down everything squad on the ground. After the bonfire caught most of the village, some galleys headed to the shore. They beached themselves and their brave crew jumped off. Then Xera's favorite part began. The crusade. Most of the job the sailors did was playing guards behind the buildings, carrying some empty barrels secluding themselves with low social responsibility women, and drinking beer. I wish I was there. I sighed while looking at the image from cameras. What? L, I say they surely do enjoy themselves. That's right. I wish I was there. X, I glanced discantly at her but pretended it is all right. Delight, are we going to approach them? C, no, not yet. A couple degrees more. Bang 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 bim 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 I stir the hornet's nest. Now. The sailors suddenly understood what will happen soon. They rushed to the galleys like crazy. Some even without trousers. I did not wait for them all to be done. The main guns fell down to their loading position and the turrets slowly turned to the targets. It was my mercy to them that I did not engage the electro-hydraulics and only used backup hydraulic rotation, which is painfully slow, but inevitable. Only the stern turrets were loaded. A turret breaches jammed dead, and B turret was currently being flooded to avoid the ammo detonation. MHM. I love it. I wonder what will happen if one day I have all of the turrets flash fire. Boom boom two shells exploded within the village and, luckily for the sailors, did that far away from them. I wondered what do the spectators think of that but I can say for sure. The sailors that are currently on the beach will never dare telling anyone more lies. When I started loading the second salvo, I had more malfunctions, fires included. Because of that I had to resort to using only secondary guns. Bang 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 every six seconds a barrage of twelve shells was landing at the village. By this time the rapid unplanned evacuation was completed and scared sailors and support personnel ordered as fast as they could. With the corrections done and range measured, and thoroughly fired, the shells were accurately landing where I wanted them to land decimating the target rapidly. When I was done with the first target, I headed to the next one. After I made sure everything is proceeding smoothly, our helicopter headed back. It was surely not because all of us had a headache from the noise, the ground, the safe, and calm, and quiet ground. Lily dropped on the sand and hugged it, whatever the way she could. I am the ground creature, so don't take me anywhere else. Xera joined her immediately. Oh, gods. You too. You're a shame to our family. Cherry was the only one who had some common sense. Though, it is funny to hear the chastise from someone who is holding my legs and shaking. Oh my, I thought you all were used to the aircraft by now. She is the only one. Both Xera and Cherry pointed at Lily. While I wondered what kind of sarcasm should I use. I had my cloak pulled in a very rude manner. The Wind's side story of Withered Blossom No. 15. Ice Kai Carrier arrives to the town 12 hours after we continued travel. I confirmed what I expected. The caravaneers lost the trail, so my s why I showed them where to go. While they were suspicious of this sudden help, I was not under their suspicion currently. A few days later we left the desert. What I mean is that there was not only sand everywhere but also some grass here and there. The town they are looking for is nearby, so I finally relaxed, as the caravaneer's stupidity will not interfere with my plans. I could only scout the town during the night time and have only vague understanding of its layout. So, 
My task is to search throughout it and make sure I will find everything that can surprise me. Ani-chan, are we there yet? I have one more thing required to achieve my goal. Wait a bit longer. We are almost there. S. Ten minutes later. Ani-chan, are we there yet? Just wait a bit longer. S. Ten minutes later. Ani-chan. Just wait a bit longer. S. But I will. I fidgeted to show the current reason. Stop the caravan. S. After I was relieved, we continued. Of course, there was a bit of a reason to make the caravan stop, while we were on our way. The Rapu scout reported that the entrance to the town is empty and there are no wagons there, but currently there is a long queue of several merchant caravans. We will have to wait for a couple of days just to enter. What the? Why are we so unlucky? W. We will need to set up a camp. They are not going to pass through soon. P. I did my best to hide my delight. For now, I lied down to sleep through the day. The actual chapter's release might be postponed. I am trying to finish all three of them to have the ending and the volume decided before posting them. I want them to have a proper ending, not a hurried end because of the volume, and not an oversized CH-100 because I could not fit everything. Just bear with the waiting. V2CH-98 The questions of existence I turned round and saw the one who pulled my cloak. It was the over-familiar figurine with brown hair and glasses. How can I help you? Good to see your courtesy. Follow me. We need to talk. Alone. The girl in glasses glared at my girls, who were about to follow me. We have the right to know. They immediately raised their objections but I cut them off. I doubt it is worth your time. Not to mention. There are many things that are best not to be heard. I petted my disheartened wives, and followed the girl in glasses. I followed her further and further into the forest. Sometimes I wonder if all of the planet is divided only into the sea and the forest. In the end we walked into an opening and only then the girl in glasses turned around to face me. So? Did you enjoy your little games? That was unexpectedly nice of her. I did enjoy it, though I wonder why you are interested. I am going to reap the benefits of your fun. Of course I want to know. She gave me her most enchanting smile, if you say so. Still, you would not be asking me for this tete tete for no reason, would you? You became a bit smarter, congratulations. You are still a fool but you show the potential. Gig, can you be a bit closer to the point? This conversation slowly turns into mocking me. Answer me. Why did you make this decision? Gig, which one? Marrying them. I doubt you were so proactive so as to entrust yourself to them. Not to mention, it was them who loved you. But, are you in love with them? I am just curious if they are so important to you that you will put your life at risk. The real risk? Gig, I had some cogs clanking above my head for longer than usually. It is not the easiest question. I am a coward. I have no idea if my meek guts will handle the real fear for my life, not to mention doing anything to handle the situation, or protecting my loved ones. It takes a lot of courage to stand up and fight with your life at risk but I never met the real risk. Ha 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 ha. The girl in glasses laughed her lungs out. What's so funny? The pride has dusted off and the real face showed itself under the layer of false nobility. If you want an advice, do not pretend to be someone you are not supposed to be. She wiped the tears. It is not something that can be done easily. Ha ha ha. And you accepted it. My face was already distorted by my annoyance. Do you even remember who you are? Are you anything but a doll by now? Are you yourself, or just something that is made to think it is you? She smiled devilishly. Just what are you trying to tell me? Me? I am just looking at the doll whose strings grew into her skin too deep. Spread your wings and fly, for you are not an anchor. You are free to entertain me. She crossed her arms and kept on smiling in satisfaction. Can I go already? I felt like there is a lot of nonsense and mocking intertwined with some smart words. You can't. Gig. I have no words. I looked at her and waited for what she will do. 
The girl in glasses said nothing else and just sat down on the grass and ignored the surroundings. I followed her example and sat down. I even started reflecting on her words. Am I a doll? I understand that I am not a noble girl and it takes me some effort to keep my image, but still. Am I appearing to be artificial? My line of thought went on further and was more and more distorted. The longer I reflected on the girl in glasses words, the less I understood her. I am supposed to act. I feel like I am even forced to do so. But I am also a doll. Am I a doll? Actually, does she think because I am not showing my true colors, I am an artificial being? The longer I thought about it, the more I was feeling like she said nonsense. When I returned to this perishable earth, I saw the girl in glasses whose face was near my own. Oh, you stopped your thinking? Gig. I scratched my cheek and an ink whisker. Seriously? You were so unresponsive that it was unbearable not to paint your face. She shrugged her shoulders. Now I know. I pointed at her. It was the moment of my triumph but the girl in glasses did not even show any interest. Tell it already and let's get to the reason I called you here. Gig. You are trying to fool me. What a simpleton. Gig, hey. Now that you spoke your mind, I had a good reason to call you here. You know what I want? Gig, V2CH99. Forced evolution now that you spoke your mind, I had a good reason to call you here. You know what I want? Gig, you want to use me to your advantage? That is always on my mind. Ha, huh? I will grow old if I keep waiting for you. Gig, so? You set up cozily. You have a nice house. You have a loving family. You made yourself a lot of free space and have nothing that can make you move your A. If I won't do anything, you will be of no use. So, I am here to shatter your comfortable life. While I was processing her crazy words, she took a fan out of nowhere. It was a small paper fan in Japanese style. Stop dreaming. In a blink of my eye she was already near me and slashed me with the fan. I blocked it with my arm. Kaya. Before I could understand what happened, a wet red stain appeared on the sleeve. I jumped back but before I could react, I had my shin cut. When I somewhat gained myself the space, I saw the girl in glasses. She stood on the same place she was. I guess you understood the level of my seriousness. Fight or die, kid. Gig. Why? You have such a nice, calm life. Is it not boring? This great me will help you to remember what it means to live on the edge. Gig. Ping I barely blocked her attack. It was so brutal that I saw a trace of the cut on the blade of the stiletto. By that point I was not fighting. I was evading her attacks. Feel what it means to struggle for your life. This is harsh, kid, but it will make you stronger. While she was babbling, I kicked her stomach with the full battle cruiser power. It even pushed her a meter back. I started relentless attacks and prepared to fire the phalanx at her. B R R R R T T T T T T. The girl in glasses was caught inside a smoke cloud of shells and their explosions. Cut Kyoag. A R G H. A R G H. As stupid as ever. Gig, swing ping not bad but, ha ha ha. Before she could strike, I stopped the fan with the guard of the stiletto. This is pure UGH. Madness. The training is hard but is saves the lives. You lost your sharpness and have no will to continue advancing forward. This is no fun so, how about I give you some stimulus? Those girls, keep fighting, and I will spare them. She grinned and ran past me, right in the direction we came from. Ping ping ping. I will not let you. Ping 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 bum 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 bum. Instead of being pushed back, or rather cornered, the girl in glasses handled my all-out assault with ease. She swung her fan and left more and more cuts which burned like fire. But her counterattack did not target my limbs. I remember what kind of speed and strength she has. I was toyed with. I was not even an opponent for her. I was just a way to pass the time. She did not see me as someone worthy of her full strength. That was enough to lose the remaining hope. Yet, 
I kept on striking. Ping after I deflected her fan I saw an opening, the one that can change the tide of this fight. The stiletto pierced her arm. Small drops of blood flew out of the wound but before they fell on the ground, the wound was already healed. What? Opening. Gig. Ping I barely blocked a deliberately wide swing of the fan and avoided the kick that followed it. The longer the fight continued, the wider the gap between us was. I was losing blood and strength. She was not. You are learning. Do you see it? The fear of death that keeps pushing you forward. The danger that makes you evolve? Gig, you are mad. Bang 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 all 102 mm shells hit but neither of them exploded. Suddenly all of them fell down. That's a damn cheating. I fell on my knees. This absurd sight drained all my remaining strength. I suggest you keep fighting. After all, I am not going to stop on this much. The girl in glasses closed her fan and pointed behind me. I turned my head and saw the girls, Lily, Charlotte, and Xera. Their faces lost their color. I feel their terror. All of them were bound by fear but Xera gripped a long sword. So, are you going to stand up and fight? Or are you going to surrender? Gig. I remember what crazy words she said. It gave me enough strength to stand up. I heard some steps that stopped by my side. Let's show her what we are made of. X, the wind side story of Withered Blossom No. 16. Eyes Kai Carrier visits a Casper. Wake up, I already almost grew used to this but it does not make it less irritating. I made sure everybody is asleep and sneaked out of the camp. The town walls were well lit and there were guards everywhere. It is a tough nut to crack but if there are things I am great at, then it should be cracking the tough targets. This YI, that guided the caravaneers here, was not recalled and landed nearby. Exactly for this kind of a situation, I made my way to the other side of the town's walls and only then sent in the bomber. Nuuuu that was enough to cause a short opening where I slipped inside the town. Under the cover of illusions. I managed to find the innermost part of the town, a fortress where I might find some useful information. For a lot of time I found nothing but then I stuck my nose into the paveway, and in the corner of my eyesight I saw a hole in the wall. It was small but enough for me to squeeze through. Take that, fat BS. The first door I opened was an office of an important clerk. There were pricey things and pretty paintings. I carefully burned out the frames of the pictures and hid the rolls below my kimono. Click the door opened. I had no time to hide or use illusions so I just greeted the unexpected intruder with the nejnata. One wrong sound and I will turn you into a meat on a stick. Not if you understood. The man that entered nodded. What do you need? He was smarter than the most. Where did all those things come from? I pointed at the two heavy pricey things. From the tombs. Jackpot. V2CH100. One last thing Sarah and I were standing against the girl in glasses. Two blades against one cheat fan. Ready? Good. Let's end you over comfortable life. Gig. Ping I blocked the fan that was aimed at Xera's face and kicked the girl in glasses like a football player. Jaya. I almost paid with my leg. Even though it was not cut off. I had my bones broken. Take this. With Xera's cover I managed to stand up and push forward for an attack. Smack but I had the top of my head hit with a fist. This starts to bore me. The girl in glasses looked at me with no interest. She prepared to strike me down. Die. X. Xera swung at the slowed girl. In a flash. Cut. The night was cut in half. No. You'd better worry about yourself. Gig, swing slash a bitter taste of metal filled my mouth. With the remainder of my draining strength I looked up. Rest well. The girl in glasses flashed, and I heard something hitting the ground. As the view grew dark, I caught a glimpse of brown foxes. Gah, ha, ha, ha. I gasped. Hey, take it easy. I saw the faces of my wives. Where am I? We found you lying here in the middle of a glade. See? I looked around and... It was the same place where I fought the girl in glasses. 
the same place where we all were killed. I checked myself but there were no cuts and no damage. Even the stats showed no damage received. As if that did not happen. Should we check her bottom? She might have a needle stuck there to make her so restless. I looked at the foul-mouthed knight but she was perfectly fine too. Was it a dream? A crazy dream. I decided to return back home to relax. Physically I was perfectly fine, but mentally, without caring for the unnecessary ballast, I steamed back home. Weirdly, the flooded gun turrets and jammed hydraulics were all repaired, even though the 24-hour repair period did not pass. The first thing I did after opening the door was heading to the bedroom. Master? I passed by Francis, even without greeting her. It was either the rudest thing I could do, or I was too tired. Neither of those ever happened. She was weird the past days. We need to look after her. L. The bedroom duties? F. She is too tired for it. Delight looked like she was dead. C. Though I was dead. The next few days I spent either sleeping, or thinking. By that time, the patients everybody had has dissipated. Answer, what happened? C, just a bad dream. No dream can keep one so disheartened for so long. Is it so hard to tell us? C, dot dear. We are always here to hear you out. We will understand anything you tell us. Like, we accepted that you are a ship. L, what? C, you didn't know? X that is beyond crazy. C, K H M. As I was saying, tell us if something burdens you. I am eager to help you, my dear wife. C, well. We were killed. Their faces told me everything I need to know. I too would think I am crazy if I was to hear that from a side. Then, even the death itself is not something that can stop us. How did you even manage to get yourself killed? X, the girl in glasses. I have no idea how she did it. I feel like you were under the mind control magic. L, what do you know about it? It is one of the hardest to learn magic types. That girl would not be near the king if she was not genius. So I guess it is not surprising. L, that does make sense. With this issue no longer bothering me I returned to my slow-paced life. I was sleeping, eating, cuddling with pretty girls, and just having fun shooting down poor local monster life. But this lifestyle started to burden me. The girl in glasses never showed up again but. Her words. Was she right? That this comfortable lifestyle is not for me? That I stagnated and no longer move forward? What should I do? You are tired of this life. I heard the god's voice. Why did you visit me? Because, if you remember, I offered you a chance to try something else when you are fed up with the current life. What do you think about trying something else? Something entirely new? Gee, I guess. Why not? I will tell my loved ones that I will be missing. Of course. Whenever you are ready. Gee, now. I just need to finish one last thing. If the part after the battle appears to be weird, it is because I rewrote it from scratch. The original was too grim and psychological. I don't have any regrets that I did rewrite it. I deleted all traces of the original ending so there will be no chances of it returning. V3CH1, manning the stations OK, I am ready. One day I notified the god that I am ready to give it another try. Great, now close your eyes. I did as he ordered. I felt chilly and then lost my consciousness. Announcement I strongly recommend you to read the prologue 1 and 2 if you did not. What greeted me was that God, you did a good job, kid. To fight against a wolf with your bare hands. Commendable achievement for a little girl. Weird. Why? When did I do that? It is time. Yes. I felt confused. I have no idea what will happen. As if I expect both my death, and something else. You can decide what kind of ship you will become. Weird, whatever. I have a chance and I shall use it. I want to be fast and furious ship. Understood, kid. If you find that your choice is too much for you, I might change your ship. I doubt it W. It feels off. Farewell. Don't die again. 
Before I could ask what is going on, I was engulfed by darkness. I opened my eyes somewhere in a forest. Might be even the same forest where I was. What was I doing in a forest? I looked around and confirmed there are no uninvited visitors nearby. After I was satisfied with my location, I checked myself. The first thing that attracted my attention was a tail. A black tail of a cat. Immediately I touched my head and there were cat ears, which are very sensitive. I have a slim body, with small chest and butt. But, I made a backflip with no effort. The only problem with that is my hair that covered my eyes afterwards. It is somewhat short and wavy. At least it reaches my shoulders, so it should be fine. I am wearing a black sailor uniform with long sleeves and red edging. I even have knee socks of black color. The only thing that does not follow the same color scheme is white and is barely visible from under the skirt. Spoiler it is not pantsu, you hentai. It is a petticoat. Collapse? What do I have with me? The same lunchbox I had before. With a sticker on top of it. Meals refresh every six hours. They should be enough for you not to die of starvation. Don't expect too much. Thank you. And finally comes my gear. On the place I was lying I saw a scabbard, with a long curved blade in it. It was a katana, with the length of almost a meter. I tried swinging it, and my muscle memory performed such swings that I feel like a samurai. I sheathed it and attached the scabbard to my skirt belt. I summoned the gear and out of nowhere I had three gun turrets show on my sides, and torpedo mounts appeared near my waist. How do I check what I have? Stats IJN Kirin Army, DDL. Upgrade points, zero. Upgrade points are received for firing any weapons during the battles. Hits give ten times more points. Torpedoes, three thirds. Torpedoes are replenished on a base. The amount increases with amount improvements. Health points, 3700. HP shows how much damage you can survive. Evasion, 105. F shows the chances of evading attacks, affected by the outside conditions. Does not guarantee evasion. Hull integrity minus 100%. High shows the status of the hull. When the ship is burning, the high decreases. It kills you, even if the HP is still there. Autonomy minus 100%. The amount of fuel and ammunition. It should be enough to steam at full speed for 3000 nanometers. Just don't forget to return to your base to resupply. Two single turret increase caliber. 0 200 dual gun turrets. 0 400. 14 single torpedo mount. Compressed air increase caliber. 0 100 improved mounts, 0 250 improved propulsion, 0 500 6.5 RI Sarka AA mount 1 increase caliber, 0 50 improved mounts, 0 100 6.5 RI Sarka AA mount 2 increase caliber, 0 50 6.5 RI Sarka deck mount increase caliber, 0 50 depth charge mount. None. Depth charge type, fixed fuse. Stern rails, 050 fixed variation fuse, 050. Are there any consumables? Hello, hey. AI, I test fired the guns. Bang 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 the combined salvo of three guns managed to cut down a tree. A small tree. I felt that it would be better not to hope that it will be my main armament in the near future. I decided that is it better for me to start moving. One way or another I will not achieve anything if I keep standing here, so I headed out to find anything that can be of use to me. Soon I heard something and ran there. I ran out of the forest and saw a beach and an endless tide of an ocean. Let the adventures of a cat girl begin. The wind's side story of withered blossom no 17. The oil that greases her. I asked about every known dungeon and tomb in this entire region. The clerk willingly shared this information after an hour of torture. With a nice map and the required data, he was left in the office and I headed back the same way I came. I decided not to use the plane trick again so I had to sneak past the guards on the wall. Douse the torches on a small part of the wall and mask yourself with magic, no guard would notice you. Stop. Well, 
Nobody noticed who exactly I am. The morning. Gulp gulp gulp. Wah. Yummy Tilda. I drank some fresh milk. Bought with some money from a shady deal. Do you want some more? The scout gave me another helping of fresh milk. It is bad to think I am that bad. I was just drinking the results of milking the pack animals. Considering that I am the only one who needs milk, everybody was happy to ease the burden of lactating animals. The actual shady deal happened later, when I sold some pricey things to one of the caravans nearby in exchange for a good map. I did not forget to anonymously notify the guards about the deal. No, wait. I did not do that. I was studying the map and cross-referencing the found locations with the information I have. Fuji, what are you doing? P. Anichan, I am looking at this picture book. Do you want to read it to me Tilda? I showed the illusion. The priest's face twitched and she silently backed away. Meanwhile, the final briefing for the Ryusai squadrons was performed. I can't wait to bear the results of my handiwork. In archaeological sense, I mean, though I won't be against a magic sword, or two. V3CH2 The wild blue sea I watched how waves drenched the sand on the beach. It was a sight I could enjoy forever. Yet, I had to move out. If I don't want to rely on the lunchbox, I need to find a civilization. I approached the water, and stepped on it. Then again, and again. Only after I made sure I can stay afloat like a water strider, I made the test sailing. I quickly got used to moving on the surface of the water. What made my training harder is that pinging sound that appears when I am afloat. Ping. 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 Soon I started feeling what was happening in the water nearby. The sonar was detecting fish and other animals. I knew their movements and location. This vague information was enough to act. And, just to test the concept, splash two barrels fell into the water and soon hit the bottom. Boom boom I felt the shock wave and saw the pillars of water but I did not have my ears bleed. The sonar turned off right before the explosions and turned on immediately after the sound stopped. Tonight I will have some grilled fish. There was so much fish around me that I could literally carry a pile of fish in my arms. There was no need for that, so after I picked up a couple of large specimens, I left the scene of bioterrorism. I sailed at full speed through the sea. In the distance I saw a couple of islands but they would be as deserted as the one where I was. Ping. Ping. Dot, ping. Instead of usual fish dots I heard something else. Ping. 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 I immediately dropped depth charges. Ping 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 boom boom ping 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 a large object quickly changed direction but still was circling around. Splash the object immediately changed its direction and moved away from the barrels. Boom boom I continued dropping the barrels like crazy but they all were exploding deeper than the target and neither of them wanted to deal a serious blow to it. But it forced the attacker to approach the surface. It was a shark. Judging by its fin, a large fin, bang 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 small splashes of rapid firing guns were landing near the fin but they too could not hurt the shark. So, I, I'm going to regret this decision, splash one torpedo was dropped into the water, and sunk immediately, I had no time to face palm, so I continued peppering the shark fin, bang 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 one of the shells hit the fin and the shark dived, I dropped a lot of depth charges and kept on firing at the surface of the water, to disorient it, or to at least keep it underwater. Boom boom the pinging stopped. A black shadow started rising from the water, as well as a red spot on the surface. I patted my shoulder, because I am the only one who can, and continued in the same direction I was going, but the longer I continued, the less islands I was seeing. Soon I understood that I am only heading further into the open sea and that I will never encounter anything useful out here. The crimson color of the sky reminded me that I am an idiot. I wasted a lot of time for no reason and now I will have to sleep in the middle of nowhere without a shelter or food. Also, I only now noticed that I dropped the fish into the water when I was fighting the shark. I am such an idiot. 
Ping 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 my shouting attracted another object. After I dropped a few presents I steamed away at full speed. Luckily, my speed was much higher than the pursuers. But it had its own consequences. So, I am in the middle of nowhere. I see no land. I have no idea where I am going. It is already night. Even in the complete darkness I was able to see where I am going, albeit worse than during the day. It helped me navigating but the sight distance was not enough to see any land. I was already desperate to find something so I just set course and maintained it. I was betting everything on it. My watch showed that it was past the midnight, but I saw nothing, except for water. By the dawn I managed to find that not all of the water is the same. There are some algae colorings to it. Also, I bombed a few sharks. Only when the sun was already visible. On the horizon I saw something. I just rushed there, without thinking. What I saw there was disturbing. It was a wreck of a sail ship. It was not mast. Neither it was stranded. It was afloat but with a lot of holes in its sides. It was slowly sinking. It was still somewhat floating so I had no choice but to climb inside and sleep there. The wind's side story of withered blossom no 18 hot baths a few days later the queue finally moved enough to let us start the paperwork to enter the town. Considering how many caravans pile up here, I feel that the authorities don't like the people of the desert. Well, can't blame them. They already set up in a cozy green place. Fuji, you and priest, can go, will be filling all of the permissions. Have fun Tilda. The scout looked at us with jealousy but it can't be helped for her. My hair requires extensive care, and the priest wanted to visit the hot baths of this town. The first thing I did after seeing the water was jumping inside. WWW what are why you doing? The priest's face was red as a tomato. Come here Tilda. Come here Tilda. Those weird people. Don't tell me she plans to bath with this towel tied around her body. D don't do this. It is not AA appropriate. P. It can't be helped, can it? I pulled my towel inside the bath and tied it around myself. Phew. Good to see you understood. The priest climbed into the hot bath and was ready to sit down. Splash with one rapid and precise strike I caught the towel and pulled it off. I smiled in triumph but then, hi P. I saw something. W carrot? It was. Well, stop staring. P. Only then I understood what is going on. Two hours later. Ha 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 ha. The caravaneers were dying of laughing. S ho 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 ho. How w ho 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 is it Tilda? S. I looked at the poor priest, who hid in a corner. We too fell for it Tilda. W. At least he looks cute. Ha ha ha. B. Just kill me. P. The wind side story of withered blossom no 19. Trade is good after the caravan entered the town. The caravaneers set up their stall at the local market. They were selling all kinds of junk and the monster materials. Meanwhile, the dwarf brought me to one of the more respectable shops here. Oh, customers. The salesman approaches us with shining smile and was ready to start bullzing, when the ballistieri pushed him the crown I found in a dungeon. Appraise it. B. For a millisecond the salesman's eyes glittered but I was the only one who noticed it. It is. A good craftsmanship. Are you willing to sail it? S.M. Why? I jumped on the dwarf's leg before he could say anything foolish. Uncle? Uncle? Is this thing pricey? Is it? Is it? I turned on the stupid child. Why yes, it is. How about you? S.M. Can I? Can I watch you appraise it? How much it costs? How much? How much Tilda? The salesman was about to push my cute little face away but when his hand almost reached me, he saw a grim figure of the dwarf with a huge crossbow. The hand immediately started petting me. W W what a G good girl why you are. He cautiously looked at the immediate threat to his life. He led me inside his workshop. Sit down there and don't cause trouble. I obediently sat there. 
It was not the richest place so I will have to be satisfied with the appraisal. When it looked like the salesman was done, I returned to pestering him. So, how much, uncle, how much is it? Uncle, tell me, how much it costs? Uncle, uncle, uncle. It's four gold. I noticed that he lies, so. Well then, it looks like it is time to trade. I shut his mouth before he could scream. V3CH3. In the ocean everybody will hear your screams. It was the worst sleep in my life. Every few minutes I was hearing scary noises and creaking. Even the cawing of ravens outside was scarier than it normally would be. And all that is only a small problem in comparison with the ships sinking. I woke up in the evening and somehow was still dry, even though I should be underwater by now. It is time for the cat to abandon the ship, like a rat. I jumped off the deck, which was moistened by water, and steamed into the darkness. My desperate search for dry land was proceeding disastrously as always. Once again I picked up a signal of the sonar but this time there was a group of enemies. Ding you received three silver coins, one copper coin, 80 upgrade points IJN Kirin Army, DDL. Upgrade points. 30 torpedoes, 2 thirds HP, 3700 high minus 100 percent AU minus 83 percent, 2477 nanometers depth charge mount, none depth charge type, fixed variation fuse stern rails, 050 variable fuse, 050 I thanked God for having infinite supply of depth charges and started dropping them in pairs, just randomly dropping them here and there in hopes of hitting something. Boom boom splash a huge shark jumped out of the water and almost caught me, I fell to a side and thus avoided it in the last moment. Splash boom boom the charges were exploding at the required depth but they were still too inaccurate, there was no system of dropping them. They were just thrown into the water with no aim at all. They could fall from the front, or from the right side only. Boom boom after the last drop, two sharks were killed. The rest of them retreated further from me and that gave me enough time to start running away. I was once again fleeing from combat but I gained some upgrade points, and soon might be able to cause more trouble. When I made sure I ran far enough, I continued searching for land or civilization, or at least anything but the open sea. The weather station showed that the weather will not be nice for long. There is a high possibility of a storm, which will be a huge issue for my survival. Physical survival included. I spent the entire night steaming at cruise speed to conserve fuel. And at long last I saw something on the horizon. The closer I was, the more I was assured that it is not a hallucination. I rapidly accelerated to get there fast, before the storm. Then, I saw something unexpected. A whale-like creature surfaced and headed towards me. Even with my small experience of this world I could tell that a sharp-toothed sea creature was not considering me a friend. From a closer distance I understood that it is small enough for me to fight. I drew the katana and rushed in. The animal avoided my attack by diving. Splash everything was going perfect. Boom boom when the pillars of water settled, only red water rose to the surface. I continued heading towards the possible land. Only an hour later I approached and understood what it is. La and comma f yeah. Then, the water around me bubbled. My ears and tail immediately pressed down to my body. From below me. A huge tentacle shot into the air and I barely avoided it. From the surface, from a bush, a reptile crawled. It was a crocodile-like monster with long muscular limbs, and very sharp teeth. Note for the future. Never shout here. I immediately dropped the depth charges at the deep sea monster and while it was deafened by the explosions, I headed for the safer land. The crocodile ran at me but I evaded it and while it was running past me, I cut off its right legs, with a single cut I made the monster crippled, I approached the fluttering monster, I walked right to its head that hissed at me and showed its long teeth, you know, I was out there, 
alone for three days without any food with all of my fish on the bottom of the F ocean, with F sharks and krakens everywhere, do you F think I will be scared of you? Somehow I felt that this monster trembled and started shrinking, you know, you look so tasty. Cut chop cut cut chop I was stirring the coals in a campfire. On a stick construction were pieces of juicy meat, and some vegetables. The scent was driving me crazy so I fought myself, and I was winning. I patiently waited until the meat was cooked, and only then I ate it all. When my stomach was finally full, I went to sleep. On the warm remnants of the reptile, tomorrow I will be. Hey, what are you doing there? The Wind's Side Story of Withered Blossom No. 20 Plans for the Future Thank you, Uncle Salesman Tilda. I exited the shop with an ice bag full of gold coins. With my funds secured I started running around the town's market. Look, look, can I buy this doll? Can I? Can I? S sorry. We be better buy something else. The dwarf reacted to my provocations the way I wanted to see. With every rejected necessary for me thing I was more and more saddened. Up to the point when this amiable dwarf grandpa could no longer bear to reject my requests. Then, the actual shopping spree began. W will this be of use to you? I made shy expression and showed a bunch of jars. Yes, of course. He could only accept it. The same was done with a number of ropes, clothes, some oil, wood planks a large crate of iron nails, glowing powder, three teleportation scrolls, food, water, hay, and soft pillow, as well as two cute dresses, and three dolls and stuffed animals, the latter ones are to avoid suspicion about of my plans, what in the god's name is this, s, y, just y, w, sorry, brothers, I couldn't refuse her, she wanted the dolls so much, b, are those the dolls? P. And she wanted to buy us something useful. B. A crate of nails? S. Only Chan. Do you and not? You. Need. Ark. T. Them? I went bid and prepared to cry. O. O. Of C. Course W. E. W. Would need them. T. Thank you. S. So much Tilda? S. After that I paid a visit to the clerk I encountered back then, and after a gentle persuasion, the bloody pulp agreed to give the caravaneers three requests to deliver goods for an unexpectedly good reward. V3CH4 Civilization Hey, what are you doing there? I jumped out of my hiding and gripped the hilt. In a distance I saw a couple of men with a torch. I had a very complicated feeling. They are the civilization I searched for but I wonder if I can trust them. Who are you? I chose to talk first. We are the guards. We were patrolling when we saw a smoke. Now it's your turn. What are you doing there? One of them started approaching. I did not let go of the hilt but I was only showing that I am not an easy target. Patrolling? There is a settlement nearby? Wah! Well, he was dumbfounded. They exchanged glances and thought for a few seconds. You are joking? Gee, does it look like? I showed the carcass of my prey. Damn. Were you stranded? I nodded. Fine, follow me. We'll lead you to our village. You'll be able to rest there. Gee, why should I trust you? Because you can either stay here and freeze, or stay in the village. It's your call. He raised his hands and headed back to his comrade. I looked around myself and decided it won't hurt to give it a shot. Don't do anything you'll regret. I performed a few swings to show that I am not a damsel in distress. Ain't it my phrase? The guard giggled. We arrived to a small village but far away in the distance I saw some lights. What is there? I pointed. Ah, it's the capital city. If you are stranded, it's the best way you might get some money. Just don't expect them to be so nice to you. This city is merciless to those who have no money. That is why there are many villages around. Gee, I felt a strong sense of deja vu but considering my multitude of options I will be visiting this city soon. The guard led me to an inn. Gian Luca, my friend, can I ask you a favor? One of the guards shook hands with the innkeeper. Marco, 
My boy, just tell me what you need. I, we found this beast on the coast. Can you let her sleep here? For tonight at least. Gee, very well. The innkeeper reluctantly agreed. The guards left. Beast, follow me. There will be no food but I will let you sleep here. He opened a room and gently pushed me inside. The room was not too bad. There was a proper bed, a table, and even a wardrobe. Nothing too fancy but even the inn reception was not showing off luxury. Thank you. You are welcome. You are welcome. Would you need water? I? No, thank you. I will not be causing you more trouble than necessary. Ha ha ha. What a courteous child you are. Good night, beast. The innkeeper gave me a key and left. I closed the door and went to sleep. I was wary of any sounds and woke up several times during the night but nothing bad happened. In the end I managed to fall asleep and wake up in the morning. I walked to the reception. The innkeeper was already working. Good morning, beast. Slept well? I, yes. I put the key on the desk and headed to the exit. If you are fine with working, I know some places that would need help. The innkeeper called out to me. I thought about the offer. I will try my luck in the city. This is not a refusal. Ha ha ha. Then, find this old man if you change your mind. Farewell. I waved my hand and left. The village was living its own life. The people were walking. The animals were grazing. The children were playing. While I was heading to the road, I sensed something and swung the katana. Wow. The children were astonished when they saw the swing. I was surprised as well. One of them was standing in the throwing stance, and what I sensed was a stone he threw at me. D damned beast, go away. This is our village. The brat started shouting at me. The other children joined. Swing cut with a single swing I cut a small tree that was nearby. The brats started trembling, one of them even wetted his pants. Mama. One demonstration was enough to scatter them. I walked out to a road that led towards the city, and jogged there. When I arrived, I saw queues of people and wagons, all standing in front of a checkpoint which blocked a long stone bridge. The bridge appeared to be the only way to reach a city that was on an island. My turn to enter arrived only by the midday. Next, a beast, what do you need? The guard looked at me skeptically. I need to enter and I thought you just wanted to jump around. So, are you going to answer? Gee, I am going to find a job. Ha, huh. Captain, what should we do? She's not on the entrance list. Forget the list. She goes to the brothel, remember? A local brothel needed a new worker. Don't forget to make me a discount. Ha ha ha. A man in armor laughed and I was pushed towards the city. At least I was now on my way inside. Announcement IJN Kuranami Glossary Entry was added. The Wind's Side Story of Withered Blossom No. 21. Silent Dunes It is weird. The scout was still thinking about the sudden luck. We have no choice. Those townspeople wouldn't let us in the next time if we were to refuse. W. Still. It is too convenient. S. If the certain person was to be here. I would have mentioned that I have the luck of Yukikes but from the caravaniers it means nothing. We were traveling to the first point of interest. It is hard to find and is guarded by strong monsters. So, its treasures are mostly intact. When we arrived to the search area I confirmed that there is nothing in here. All magic begins when you look behind the curtain. Fuji, where do you think you're going? The nanny rushed after me when I rushed to the dungeon. For them I was running into the barren desert. Where did she go? Everybody was shocked when I disappeared into nowhere. However, I crossed the magic curtain that covered the dungeon entrance. There was a pyramid surrounded by a sandstone wall, and a lot of skeletons. The prepared flights of dive bombers rushed into action. Niu my foolish enemies had no way of resisting. My pest extermination efforts proved that there are little to no ways of fighting aerial attacks for the locals. Even the mages cannot hit a flying target. So, I was effortlessly turning the defenders of the tomb into ashes. Boom boom after the barricades on my way were dealt with, 
I finally made my way into the pyramid. I melted the stone door of the entrance and squeezed inside of the tomb. I even prepared a bag for the loot. V3CH5 Big city streets I crossed the long stone bridge and stepped on the streets of the city. The first impression I had was that I am in the same village I was this morning. Around me were small wooden houses, some small shops, and cattle. There were people walking on the road and making way only to the wagons that were flowing into the city. However, I quickly understood that those are some sort of slums where people live because they cannot live in the actual city. Soon I was walking on a paved road and was surrounded by stone buildings with extravagant decorations. Only few of them were two floor buildings, because those were the lowest. What surprised me even more is that every passerby was smiling. Cheerful talking and smiles were everywhere. The shops were crowded by happy customers, the markets were filled with laughing. The streets were bustling. I approached one of the street stalls. Hello, can I buy an apple? Oh, beastkin, a rare sight here. Of course, choose the one that you like the most. The vendor showed me large baskets of red and green apples that were almost screaming how juicy and fresh they are. When were they harvested? Just today, every morning they are harvested and by the midday they are already on the stalls. The government does its best to keep the people healthy and happy. The smile of vendor calmed even my paranoia. In the end I chose a couple of apples and paid a copper coin from my reserves. I continued strolling through the city and the further I went, the richer were the buildings. Of course. For a city to have all of its buildings well decorated is already commendable but I am sure that I am yet to reach some kind of a noble district, even though I see gold decorations on normal houses. While I was searching for what to do I decided to listen to the gossip. I hid behind the corner, as if I am resting. My cat ears hear from a large distance, and soon picked something curious. Those ruffians again? Yeah, I heard they sunk another merchant ship. Oh, God. Are there any news? Did the government do something? I heard they increased the patrols but they lack fast ships to chase after the pirates. That's what happens when you build too many battleships. At least we are well protected. Those cutthroats will never dare attacking the city. You're right, you're right. What about the... After that their talk switched to a different topic. I continued making my way deeper into the city and soon I started seeing less people, but the ones who were on the streets were dressed much better. Also, the wagons changed to carriages. Another thing that changed is the way people look at me. In the city I did not see any direct hostility towards me but I surely felt glances from the passing people. I was under constant observation throughout my journey but after I entered this rich district, the people stopped caring. Actually, they were paying more attention to me when I folded my ears and hid the tail. The further I went into the rich district, the saltier was the air. Then, I started seeing warehouses and wagons. I continued walking there and saw the sea. It was the main port of the city and the roadstead was filled with two and three mast ships. Even more ships were docked and unloading. Further in the sea I saw a number of even larger ships, quite possibly the battleships the people were talking about. I remembered the way to the port and returned to the city, to the cheaper part of it. For now, I need some accommodation, and preferably, cheaper one. I entered one of the inns. Can I book a room? We don't serve beasts, sorry. The next inn, the owner forbids the beasts to book rooms, sorry. And the next, no beasts allowed, sorry. I kept on trying but everyone refused. Then, I remembered that the rich district was not too negative when looking at me. I gave it a shot and on whose name will the room be booked? On mine. Are you sure? Yes. Do you even have the money? I put three silver coins on the table. Ark, fine, you can have a room for a night. Just don't get into anyone's sight. For an affordable price of two silver coins I was given a small room for servants. The Wind's Side Story of Withered Blossom No. 22 Images of silence Sometimes even I feel gratitude for the lessons I attended. If I did not study, 
then I would not understand what I am dealing with. The tomb appeared to be Egyptian pyramid but from the inside it is Mesoamerican, I guess. On my way I encountered some skeletons in jaguar capes but they were torn apart with gunfire. My progress was steady and on schedule. Soon I reached the inner part of the tomb. There, on a stone pedestal I saw a golden idol. Just in case, I poked the stone tiles on the floor with the Najanata's pole. Pure small dart hit the pole. I see. You want to play dirty. I made my body lighter and stepped on the safe tile. It did not move, even though it should have. Without more surprises I reached the idol and grabbed it. Tremble the tomb started grumbling and I ran back. The darts whistled behind my back, as well as falling stones. A part of the floor on my way crumbled and I used the Najanata to pole vault above the pit. The passage behind me was collapsing faster than I ran so I used one of the repas to give me an acceleration. The plane materialized in the passage and immediately its wings were torn off but the fuselage dragged me out safely. Whoops. I guess I should have searched it for some more stuff. Whatever. The magic curtain disintegrated minutes after the tomb. I could only make a silly face to the caravaneers who were dumbfounded by my sudden re-emerging. The idol was safely hidden below the kimono. I just need to make sure my bottom would not be seen. The Wind's Side Story of Withered Blossom No. 23 Dead silence you little brat. The past ten minutes were filled with the nagging of the scout. She kept on lecturing me about running away and other things. I am already used to a Nietzschean lecturing me for a few hours, so this much is just boring. At least the scout is less boring than the digested furballs. The scolding went on and on. Wake up, I jolted. It looks like I fell asleep. Of course, the caravaneers covered me with some cloth to avoid me getting a heat stroke. Sometimes I wonder why they're so nice to me. I looked around, and then saw them fighting a huge mummy. Small fireballs, swords, and bow were barely enough to damage the creepy undead. The only weapon that did some damage was the huge crossbow of the dwarf. Instead of rushing into the fight I observed the mummy's movements until I understood its attack patterns. Simple and unrefined. I threw a fox fire at it. My magic fire did more damage than this world's magic so I started pounding the mummy with the fox fires. Even an enemy this stupid understood who is the actual threat here. Cra. It rushed at me ignoring the desperate attempts of the warrior, when this mess of rotten flesh and bandages was near me. I used the Najanata to spike it. The mummy pierced itself and got stuck on the blade. I nimbly jumped onto its back and aimed the guns. Bang bang two armor piercing shots broke the mummy's back and the undead was returned to its normal state of dead forever. I showed the caravaneers V sign and chirped. A Nichan. Am I a good girl Tilda? V3CH6 The purring outcast after my illegal sleep in the inn, as well as losing the majority of my funds, I decided it's a good time to find myself a workplace. I started with a market. Even in the morning the market was filled with people. The vendor from yesterday did not lie. There are many wagons arriving with fresh goods. The yesterday's food is loaded into the wagons replacing the fresh goods unloaded. Unlike the usual people here, the coachmen don't smile. I mean, they don't smile as naturally as the people here. Their smiles are so forced that it makes me shiver. What's up with the coachman? I asked one of the vendors. With them? They are from the villages. Those people are not as happy as we are. They live by themselves, with little to no support from the government. V. Weird. If the government supports people here so much, then why not support them in the villages? Ha ha ha. You must not be local, that explains everything. Just don't look into it too deep. You won't find anything but simple their city needs to prosper. I thanked the vendor and started searching for a workplace. I approached a small shop in the market. Can I work here? Beast. S. Sorry. We have no free workplaces here. I skeptically looked at two workers, who barely handled the amount of goods delivered, not to mention a long queue of people waiting in front of the shop. 
because there is no shopkeeper in place. At least think of a better lie. It is not your problem, beast. I was pushed away. Instead of making a scene here, I just headed to a different place. I entered an inn. Do you need workers here? We don't hire beast kin. The manager stopped me immediately. I am nimble and smart. And I am strict and law-abiding. I was pushed out at once. I tried inns everywhere, including the ones that are in the bottom of the world. Every single one refused to even consider me as workforce. Even as toilet cleaning workforce. Damned racists, the longer it dragged on the less I felt concerned with it. After my initial disappointment and rage subdued, I felt melancholic and apathetic about this. I just continued trying here and there, with the same results everywhere. By this point I actually caught myself thinking of applying to a brothel. After understanding the depths of my desperation, I thought about the capitalistic action. I have an entire silver coin, which I can use to buy goods and sell them but the reality has its own will. I approached a policeman to ask, how can one become an owner of a stall at the market? First things first, one should be a citizen. You are not local, are you? Beastkin are not citizens, so don't try, and if you would be caught trading with no license, you will be arrested. P. Why is it so hard? There is nothing personal. Girl, Beastkin were caught stealing so many times that everybody lost their faith in them. Now, they are struggling to keep themselves afloat, and prospering is but a distant dream. P. Still, it is too harsh. The policeman patted my head. The laws of this city are harsh but just. That is why we keep prospering, unlike many states around. If you find yourself a source of income, then you would forget of any needs. However, don't mingle with any criminals. Just a friendly advice. He continued petting me. I even felt the urge to purr. Seeing how this man was so kind, I felt like it might be my only chance to find a job. S. Sir, I will do anything, if you tell me of a place that will actually consider hiring me. I tried to make a sexy pose. This city was ruthless but I don't feel like surrendering and going back to the village. You will? His face twitched a bit and he led me behind the corner. I am stupid. S. So stupid. I unbuttoned my collar. If I tell you where you can find a job, will you let me touch your ears? P. Underscore carrot? The man was lecherously looking at my cat ears. F. Fine. He gently touched them and made me purr, purr, purr so soft. P. Purr the docks are always short on workers. Everyone is becoming a lawyer, a trader, a realtor. The dockers are so desperate that they are willing to accept everyone. There you can find many options. If you like water, you might dry, purr, joining one of the ship crews. They too have the need for sailors. P. Purr I cuddled and rubbed my cheek against his chest to show my gratitude. Thank you Tilda. He patted me again and I headed to the port. The Wind's side story of Withered Blossom No. 24. Wild oasis for the NTH time I was forbidden to go anywhere without at least two people overseeing me. I can sneak away whenever I want so it did nothing. The next destination was somewhere in an oasis. Aerial Recon confirmed there are buildings but from above I could tell only that much. I am so tired. P. I have no idea who was the idiot that sent us here but they better pay us a lot. W. Usually the caravan would stop a couple of times before reaching a destination but we were going into the less explored part of the desert where the wildlife was not suppressed. We made one stop in an oasis and almost regretted it. The sudden dive bombing helped us but we took no more risks. 2000 minutes later we started seeing occasional dry grass. The motivation of the caravaneers was increased. The grass was not actually there. But whatever makes them move, the oasis was reached by the end of the day. Even with the sunset light I could confirm there are old buildings. They did not appear to be solid so I guess there were looters who took some gold. We stopped on the edge of the oasis and decided to explore the ruins in the morning. What a stupid mistake it was. Hey, cover me, will you? 
The scout was running away from a dog-like creature. Sorry. I'm a bit busy. The warrior was holding back two of them. Give me a minute, sister. While the burlistieri was beating one of them with his crossbow, the priest was just running around like a turkey, with a pack of those creatures following him. Ha, huh. good thing I always have a squadron on standby. Mumbled I from a hill in the distance. V3CH7. Use and abuse I easily approached the port but hardly could get in. Do you even have a permission to work here? This is the first time I see you. The policeman was correct that the port lacks workers. Right when I mentioned I am looking for a job, I saw how all of the workers' eyes glistened. I almost felt the desire to recruit me right this instant. However, the port security consisted of imbeciles. Can we do anything about this slight issue? I tried using sexy pose as the imbeciles are usually led by animal instincts. W we can talk about it. In their office. The security team led me to an obscure shed and closed the door. I immediately felt their lustful gazes on my body. Shall we talk? I played along and sat on a table with a smile. Of course Tilda. One of them was too impatient and immediately groped me. Slasher. I cut off his hand and kicked him away. I am sorry but the talk will be me telling you what to do to avoid the same fate. Pierce I rested myself on the hilt of the katana. The pool of blood, which soiled the stone floor, made the security much more attentive to my words. Suddenly they remembered that today is the free to employ in the port day, established by the government itself, and they remembered that one of their colleagues died by accident when he fell into the water and was eaten by a shark. Also they remembered, that their wives cooked them more than they could eat, and they willingly shared their lunch with me. Farewell Tilda. I waved them after I was done eating. F far we allow. They waved like robots when they were seeing me out of the shed. Now that I was free to look for a job, I started wandering around. I was hit on by some sailors who thought I am a low social responsibility girl. I only slapped their hands away, nothing more. They were a bit angered but after swearing at me, they found themselves some other stuff to do. The long queue of volunteering to recruit me was charming so I accepted the first offer I was given. Just carry those boxes there. I thought it is a simple task. It's just some wooden boxes. When I tried lifting either of them, I felt my spine would break. I might be a strong and trained swords cat but I am not a bodybuilder, by the looks of it. I could lift a box up but to carry it further than a meter would be an impossible task so I started wandering around to find a cart. I found one very fast but it was already occupied. Boys, can you help me Tilda? I played damsel in distress. Go bother someone else. One of them grumbled and proceeded to ignore me. But. Come on, Luca. I heard that Effa made her carry the boxes of lead. W. I guess. Well, I. Of course. Yes, I get it. While I was pondering how I should kill the fiendish boss, the workers pushed me the cart. Thank you kiss I sent them an air kiss and returned to the boxes. With my newly obtained mean of delivery the work was completed successfully and after I was done I returned the cart. The boss was coerced to pay triple the price, so I got entire six copper. When I left his office, just outside of the door I was caught by a band of sailors. Hey, mates. She's the one. S1. I drew the katana and took stance. S. No kidding. S2. What a hot gal. S3. I felt confused but everything was solved when one of them said to me. We heard you caused some ruckus here. You're smart and we need a smarter. What do you say about joining our crew? S4, fine. I sheathed the katana as rapidly as I drew it. That's the spirit. Follow us. S4. I was led to a ship. There was nothing too exciting about it. The same merchant ship has the hundred which anchored everywhere in the port. I saw a man, who looked from behind the board. Have you found her? M. I, sir. S1, we boarded the ship, and the man approached me. He inquisitively examined me, and did not hesitate to touch my arms and legs. What a good specimen. 
The last time I saw such a strong beast was, ha ha ha, might be even before I bought this baby. He patted, hit, my shoulder with his huge hand. So? Business as usual, ha? Huh? Why the hell old people want the money first? Yeah to prove yourself first, then we'll see. Payment is two silver coins per sailing. For now, you'll be scrubbing the deck, got it? See? I, sir. I was given my weapon, a broom and a rag. The ship set sail out of the port the same night. The Wind's Side Story of Withered Blossom No. 25 Wild Squadron on my flight deck there were 32 Swai I dive bombers. All of them were perfectly lined up for takeoff, and waited for their turn. Whoosh the first four were launched, and only a trail of steam remained. Every minute I had eight aircraft launched, until all of them were airborne. Then, they grouped up and set course to the oasis. I distributed the tasks for every pair of aircraft and waited until they all were within the area. Then, vroom a half of the squadron simultaneously dived at their targets and dropped special payload, armor-piercing bombs, specially designed by Akashi to solve my constant headache of armored decks. The bombs dived into the soil effortlessly leaving only a fountain of dirt behind. Boom 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 they exploded deep underground and made a lot of sinkholes, as well as killed or trapped a lot of the monsters. My calculations were a bit off, so instead of dropping the second wave of bombs into the sinkholes I had to drop them at the remaining monsters, directly, one 800 kilograms bomb per target. I wondered if human factor affected the results of my attack. After all, it would be a shame if those guys died because they ran into a bomb. When the squadron landed I returned to the oasis to check on the caravan ears. Weirdly enough, they surpassed my expectations and survived. Somehow you went missing again, then all the sea started happening. Would you care to explain, Fuji? The scout pointed at the mayhem. I could only make the cutest and silliest smile possible. The Wind's Side Story of Withered Blossom No. 26 Wild guess this time I felt it would be hard to sliver my way out of the mess I created, or, would it? Where do those birds come from? S. 1. What birds to? They flew when they heard your fight 3. They are mine 4. You outlived your usefulness. ha ha ha. This was not even a question of what to do. It was a question of my liability. I felt that either playing fool or being honest would work. Did I mention I am plainman, sir? They were my little guys. W well. Uh. She was confused. Perhaps she expected me to keep slithering. I would not be myself if I did not try. Can you show them then? P. I don't want to. I made guts pose. The caravaneers looked at me and whispered amongst themselves. Are you sure? The scout's dreadful smile approached my face. Sob wwh. S. U. 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 K. W. 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 What happened? Instead of scolding me, she started trying to stop my tactical crying. It was surely not because I actually was terrified of her sudden approach. Uck. Anichan does not believe me. Uck. F. F. Fine. F. Fine. Anichan believes you. I believe those were yours. Okay. Okay. S. In the end it appeared that the caravaneers decided I was lying. To make one believe your truth is a lie is the peak of lying. The ransacking of the ruins was fruitful but I could not obtain too much. I put my bet on the last part. The furthest. The hardest. The deepest. The largest. And the least explored. The tomb of the Grim Reaper God, where the crown of heaven is stored, according to the legends. Of course. V3CH8. Labor cat it was a brief moment of rest. I stood on the bow of the ship, as it sailed into the sea. I was worked to the maximum of my ability for the past few days. Some crew members even acknowledged my abilities. The captain acknowledged them as well but is yet to decide on my promotion. At least the payment is good enough. The crew was mostly good to me, like there were no mistreatments or forcing me to work just for the sake of bullying. Of course, there were extreme cases. Hey, beast, are you going to stand there forever, or what? I looked behind, 
I did what I was tasked. If you have any problems with this, then tell them to the captain. TCH, whatever. At least stop being a thorn in the eye. I felt like being sarcastic. It is nice not to be a thorn, just don't forget to remove the log from your own eye. I hid from the wet hair at the lower deck. The ship has three decks, the deck where the sails are, the deck below it, and the cargo deck where the goods are stored. I was forbidden to go to the cargo deck, in case an unproven newbie, like myself, steals something. Oh, Kuro, done with your work? The ship cook asked me. Really he was one of the few people that were actually friendly with me. Most of the crew is somewhat neutral when it comes to making friends with me. I am. Do you need help? I might use some help cutting the meat. For those who have no idea, that salty jerk meat is so hard, that even the katana has trouble cutting it. I see. I took a cutting board and the meat, and started working. Actually I was mostly sawing the salted meat that tastes like a soul. It is terrifyingly bad but it is the only meat we can see in the sea. Fishing is impossible from a fast moving ship, and stopping to fish would only be done in case of an emergency. It's done. Thanks. Twice the meal for you. I did my best at cutting the meat but it was surely cut bad. However, Nobody would give it a thought. Since this meat is too hard for anybody to care how well it was cut. While I had nothing to do, I returned to the upper deck and checked on the cannons. This ship has four cannons, which are a necessity to fight against the sea monsters. At least the sharks are on the outer side of the hull. It was already a blessing for me. How's it going? I approached the poor souls who were cleaning and oiling the cannons which tend to rust easily. Same as yesterday, nothing prevents the rust, literally nothing. I grew used to their whining. Try rubbing it harder Tilda? Go away, you smarter, the gunners could only sigh. I felt like I play around too much so I continued cleaning the floors. After the dinner I was somewhat free of duties. Most of the job was already done, and the remaining jobs were guarding against monsters. I sat in the mess room and started reading a book. Just when I was properly immersed in reading, ding 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 I walked out to the deck and when I looked up, I saw a number of flying objects. They were attacking the ship. Keep them away. Keep them away. Don't let them pile up on you. The weird bird-like creatures were attacking in the flock and like hungry ravens were going for the eyes and back. With an animal-like grace I evaded the hysterical swinging of the sailors, and rushed into the largest flock that was close to the deck. I did not destroy all of the birds but I gave the surrounded men enough breathing space. Only then I proceeded to attack the flocks above. tra ta 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 tra ta 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 The sky was lit with machine gun tracers. It was just there to break the flocks apart, since it was hard to aim and fight at the same time. Yet, the attacking birds were forced to fly away. I felt that I actually accomplished something useful and was about to relax, when I heard noises from below. Some birds were stuck below the deck, and were furiously fighting against the sailors there. A moment later, four sailors flashed out of there. There are birds down below. While everybody was thinking of what to do, I seized the initiative. I will go there. Just tell me how cut you want them. Without waiting for a reaction I rushed to the stairs and attacked the unwanted visitors. The Wind's Side Story of Withered Blossom No. 27 Brutal Recon. Wake up. I was dead tired. For the past few days I had no way to sleep properly. I either was woken up immediately or it was too hot to sleep. Even though we left the desert and went deep into a savanna, I was still not prepared for what I can find. Anna-chan, are we there yet? I started pulling the priest's robe. Should be, but I never heard of a settlement here. P. At the nearest stop I once again separated from the group and launched a flight of scouts. Our course was exactly to the landmark I wanted to explore, when we arrived. Everybody was astonished. Is this a mansion? S. It looks old. There might be something useful. W. Brothers. 
Am I the only one who feels like it is the third time we arrive to a place which has nothing to do with a settlement? B. Then, all of the eyes turned to me. Still, it was no longer my problem. The caravaneers did what they were needed for. Vroom the scout flight made a low altitude flyby, and the mansion's withered gardens shook. Deteriorated hands stretched out from under the ground. Enemy. S. I see. Great purification. P. A pillar of light fell on the mansion territory, and some of the rising undead stopped moving. Still, many zombies and skeletons walked by stopped arms and half unburied bodies. Ryusai, sortie. With rapid deployment on the way, I had all of my Ryusai torpedo bombers deployed, and carpet bombed the undead. Boom 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 I ignored the crazed looks of my ex-comrades and walked forth towards my destiny. Announcement congratulations on the 76th anniversary of the end of World War II in Europe. V3CH9. Camaraderie in the face of death I drew the katana and prepared. There was nothing notable, aside from a mess that was caused by the birds struggling to leave this place. The furniture and dishes were all broken. Some belongings were thrown around and a lot of feathers were lying everywhere. I picked up one of the black feathers that were scattered around, and sniffed it. Then I tried tracking the birds with my nose. I am not a dog. Well, at least I tried. Unlike my nose, my ears found the four birds with no effort. I sneaked at one of them, and tried killing it through a curtain. The birds started struggling, and its calls were answered. The rest of the birds appeared and prepared to attack while their wounded comrade fled for its life. The birds went for my eyes immediately, and started cutting me with their talons. At most they cut my clothes but even that much was problematic. So troublesome. I flailed and killed one of them, then another one. The last one, seeing how desperate its fighting is, fled after the wounded bird, right after my eyes were cut by its talons. Those damned chicken, I will catch you and then boil you alive, it was more humiliating than dangerous, after all the wounds recuperated immediately, I followed the trail of blood until I arrived to the ladder to the cargo deck, I am forbidden to go there but the circumstances are forcing me to, nobody will be concerned with it, as long as I get rid of the birds, after I climbed down, I saw more blood everywhere, as well as a lot of unmarked crates somewhere deeper in the hold, I followed the trail, and at its end I saw two birds, one of which was covering its wounded comrade with its wing. The bird was looking at me with resolve to fight until the death. It kept on covering the wound of the other bird. My ears heard a pained clucking, and the healthy bird reluctantly jumped aside. The wounded bird crawled towards me and started flapping its wings in front of me. Despite the pain, while the other one started sneaking away in the corner of my eye. Very slowly and unwillingly, I sheathed the sword and took off a sock. I bandaged the bird. The healthy bird cautiously looked at me. However, it stopped fleeing. The wounded bird, on the other hand, did not resist and just limply waited for what would happen. I picked the wounded bird and carried away, under the constant glare of its comrade. When I walked out to the deck, I released it. The wounded bird flew away as fast as it could, before the crew managed to attack it. The captain approached me. Not bad. Still, it was a shame you let those monsters go. They will return, and there will be many of them. See, I respect them. They fought for their survival until the end, and were ready to fight on, if needed. Not to mention I was reluctant to kill the birds that clearly were trying to save each other to risk their lives for each other's sake, they shown that they are not mindless monsters. Still, I did not feel any guilt for killing the other birds. Neither did I feel any guilt for killing humans. I wonder why. After a bit of a debriefing, and cleaning the deck, I went to sleep. When I woke up, I felt a bit heavier than usually. I tried moving my limbs but they were even heavier than my body. I jolted and saw that things are not good. I was handcuffed and in a cage. I felt that the handcuffs could be broken with a light move of my wrists but for now I needed to understand what the hell happened. 
I was waiting for an entire day but nobody even tried to visit me. Only by the night time I heard steps. It was one of the sailors. R. Awake. I only glared at him. Sheesh. What a stupid beast you are. He put a bowl of hot pot and prepared to leave. Why? Indeed a stupid beast. Hey, Kuro. Have you forgotten what you were told? Ha. Huh? I almost believed you could join the crew. He left. The captain was the next visitor. He crouched and looked at me. I had high expectations. Still, you can be of use. See, high expectations of what? Of your obedience. See, I can be very wild. I warned him. I am not stupid and know what you mean by that. Still, you already jeopardized everything. If I let you go, you will ruin us the same way you may ruin us now after being caught. See, you are contrabandists, and fear that I would have snitched you? Better safe than sorry. I cannot appear lenient. He shrugged his shoulders. Still, he was very cautious. You expect me to break out? I don't doubt you will. Just remember, I am the only one who knows where we are, and where we can dock. You are the same hostage to me, as I am to you. See, the Wind's Side Story of Withered Blossom No. 28 Brutal cleanup after the main horde of the undead was cleared. I sent the remaining dive bombers and fighters to remove the surviving obstacles. I did not expect this one to be an easy operation. That was indeed the case. After the skeletons and zombies managed to form up and deploy their weapons, I started taking aircraft casualties. The enemy bows were shooting magic arrows that tracked the slow-moving aircraft. As my planes had to strafe at the ground targets, they also were slowing down. More and more undead were rising from the ground, refilling their casualties, and becoming a tide of rotten flesh, and brownish bones. It did not take long before the attack runs were aborted. The undead horde was marching at us. The priest's futile spells, and scout and ballistaries shooting were just a drop of water in a sea of salt. The longer it continued, the more disadvantageous our situation was. Now I finally felt excitement. Hee <laughs> hee, ha 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 ha. Is this all you've got? Now it is the time for you to face the despair. The growling of piston aircraft changed to low humming of jet engines. The humming itself started changing to howling. As kickers started taking off, unlike dive bombers, the kickers cannot carry proper bomb lord, so I sorted my skill aircraft. New several flights of FJ-3M fighters flashed above me, and headed towards the horde. Before the undead could react, the fighters were already banking to the sides after the successful attack. Big tanks separated from their bomb rails and fell at the enemy. Several seconds later, the undead horde was caught in fire, burning dead in napalm. It was only the first wave. French battleships characteristic Stush class battleships 2-4x? Inch guns 1-3x? Inch gun 6-2x? Secondary guns 8-4x 100mm dual purpose guns 4-2x 76mm dual purpose guns 16-4x 40mm Bofors 22x 20mm Zoerlikon 27 knots maximum speed 2600 tons displacement melee weapon Rapier love interest don't see anybody but each other. Two ships dashed Orleans minus 1944 1945 dashed to Brittany, 1946 skills. Abuse semi perforant explosive lidite shells. On activation, loads the main guns with Safi shells, capable of penetrating heavy armor, and exploding inside. On activation, fires a salvo of helidite shells with higher chance to set fire on target and deal critical damage. Dash Dolian's sniper shot fires a single shot with main gun. The shell has zero dispersion and is fired with 100 AC. No damage debuff supply can be used every 24 hours. Super skill hammer and anvil. Anvil fires AP shots, increases damage of his shots for sister ship. Dash de Britanni decimation fires all installed guns in unison and creates a barrage. The barrage is not affected by AC, 
All guns must be loaded. Can be used every 24 hours. Super skill. Hammer and anvil. Hammer. Fires helidite shots. Better results after sister ship's super skill. The wind's side story of withered blossom no 29. Brutal opposition after the napalm burned, and the scorched ground was free from the undead. I continued my victorious march. I walked through the burned bodies that piled up. The few not completely dead bodies were decapitated with the Nagenata. Unlike the fat WS, I at least have something to protect myself, while they can only boink the enemies away with their fat. When I finally entered the mansion's territory, I heard the caravaneers approaching. What happened? S. Nothing. I pointed at the ashes on the ground and continued towards the prize. Then, the ground started trembling. A huge paw appeared from the fountain in the middle of the garden. A huge zombie dragon unburied itself. Ruuuu the dive bombers on standby were launched immediately. The remaining Swai and Ryusai flights were rapidly armed with 800 kg bombs. The bombers rolled and dived from above, dropping their light payload at the enemy. Boom boom bang 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 I opened fire at the undead dragon and rushed forward. Seeing that it was pushed down by the explosions, I wanted to kill it with my own hands. To forever show the freak Yandir that I am superior. Ruu the dragon opened its maw and spewed fire, which I countered with the fire of my own. In my eyes were only the two of us, the hunter, and the prey. My instincts were kindled by its trembling and fear. Yuuag. With a courageous war cry. Pitiful squeak. I rushed at its head and aimed my blade at its insides. I clearly saw its jaws that opened in a desperate attempt to stop me. Yet, this why I were already diving, and my Nagenata was about to bite in the dragon's flesh. V3CH10. A cat in a cage while I had nothing to do. I focused on thinking of a way to set myself free with diplomatic ways. If nobody agrees to consider letting me go, I can always escape myself but with casualties expected. In the end I could not think of a better way than naively asking to let me be freed. I waited until a sailor was nearby. Alone. Why don't you open the cage and let me walk around? It's not like I have anywhere to go. I. I guess it's fine. Just don't go anywhere. S. The cage was opened and I wandered around the cargo deck. When I examined the crates. I confirmed that there are unmarked crates placed throughout the deck. All of them are hidden among the normal crates, on which I found marking of what is inside, where it is shipped, and who is the receiver. The sweet freedom was very restricted and nobody allowed me to move out of the hold. I did not pursue further mobility for now and just waited for the best opportunity. You were let out of the cage? The captain climbed down and looked at my examination of the crates with irritation. So I must sit there all the time? You must. I ask you to never stick your nose out of D without a permission. See, but I was permitted. I said in triumph. If he'll let you out of D one more time, he will be occupying a cage next to yours. See, bah, can't you be lenient? I can't. See? At least tell me why I must sit there all the time? Before the captain could answer, a sailor slid down the ladder. Captain, we are being intercepted. S. Just sit dear and don't cause me trouble. C. I obediently sat in the cage and prepared to run. If situation favors me. An hour later, a group of people climbed down here and started thoroughly examining every crate. They were dressed in purple coats and had a lot of papers with them. The captain was here as well, walking around and giving them petty excuses. When the inspectors were finding any error. B but it was not our fault, signore. The crates were received as is. The client refused to let us confirm their contents before loading. See, one of the inspectors pointed as a crate and whispered something. His colleague nodded and proceeded to the next crate. Another counterfeit good, it can be explained as the owner's stupidity, or as a direct violation. Keep searching. We need the concrete evidence. I was tired of waiting for them to reach me. When I glanced again, I saw the captain's gaze on me. While nobody was looking at him, 
He put his palms together in a desperate plea not to cause trouble. I continued playing around and remained silent. The inspection was finding wrong markings again and again. The captain's face was becoming redder and redder, possibly from fury. I wondered if he was enraged at his suppliers, or at the inspection. After an entire hour of searching through the cargo, the inspection arrived closer, and finally noticed me. Look, a beast, what does it do in here? I won, hey, signore, is it a slave? I too, oh of course no. S. She was caught when she tried to steal the goods. See? The inspectors glanced at me with apparent doubt. Really? They asked me. You can say that. A minor insubordination but no stealing. So you are not enslaved? The inspector was still doubtful, so I pushed the door of the cage, which, to the captain's fortune, was not locked. You see? Why would you need to stay there then? I managed to confuse the inspection. I smiled, which made the captain pale. I was not locked because. Because she was just warned. If you try to steal something again, you yeah, will be locked there for real. See, did anybody ask you? The inspector barked. So? I too, sir. The radiant sun called for you. We were interrupted by a head that peeked from the crew deck. Got it. Mario, make sure you find out what she wanted to tell. Arrest him if necessary. I won. Only one inspector remained. He continued asking me questions. So, is it true? I already whispered him the locations of the contraband, while the captain was far from us and distracted by delving in something. Nod signore, can you come here for a mo? I too, bang a white cloud shot out from the captain's hand, and the inspector fell dead. The wind's side story of impudent blossom no thirty. Final dreams of domination, yeah. Ha. Tardotk. This, foo. -a. Wake up already, you damned brat. Smack I -a -a. W. What does a fat bee do here? The first thing that greeted me in the morning was ugly face of crazy fox. You. While Akagi was boiling up, I looked around. Before I could react, I had my ears pulled. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts. The door slid to the side. Akagi, what are you doing? It was calm voice of Anichan. Fat W reluctantly let go of my ears. Ak, Anichan, this fat ugly bee hurt me. Fuji, how many times did I tell you already to stop calling her like that? And why are you still in nightgown? I tried waking up this brat, but she kept on sleeping and mumbling nonsense. Fat B looked away so I could pin a kick me note to her back, and Nichan looked around the room. So, you were reading manga and novels during the night. Again? And Nichan removed the note and lightly pinched my cheek. It's not my fault. It was too interesting. Yes, yes. Dress up and go wash yourself. The breakfast is almost ready. She petted me and walked away leaving me alone with the ugliest creature. Hurry, I don't want to babysit you for longer than necessary. Could you please go away? I feel like throwing, when I see you. You impudent. Akagi, come help me. My ears were saved by Anichan's call. After I was ready, I went to the dining room. During the breakfast, Anichan left for a couple of minutes. When I returned to my room, I did not find any of my manga supplies. In the end Fuji was punished by Margi. She was forbidden to read anything before sleep. Of course, because of that the commander had to solve the Fox family issues. For example, Akagi's desire to murder her step-sibling for pouring white paint on her. Fuji washed away her sorrow by drinking cola with the Union carriers, and soon was back in action and causing as much trouble as she did before. However, she never had a chance to read too much manga or novels, since her sisters did their best to prevent it. At least, everyone thinks so. V3CH11 A knight in shining coat bang bang shots were heard above. My ears even caught sounds of screeching metal. As I thought. You brought us death. See, was it not you who? 
damned beast, your cursed kin. See, Pierce from the captain's chest was sticking a tip of a weapon. The captain slowly turned his head, and as the weapon was pulled out, he fell on the floor. Behind him I saw a blonde in a golden coat. She held a rapier in her hand. My, a beast. Ow, lucky soul, you are safe now. Don't be scared I will save you Tilda. She stretched out her hand and helped me to get up. Then she smiled and said, close your eyes, little one Tilda. I did as she said and heard a swing of the rapier, which abruptly stopped near me. The girl hesitated for several seconds and swung again. Clack I heard the sound of metal clanging on the floor. Oh open your eyes? Gee, the handcuffs were removed and the girl was weirdly stiff. It lasted a few moments before she recollected herself. Let's go. She pulled me and we escaped to the crew deck. The deck was covered in traces of combat. Bullet holes, dropped sabers and rifles, shattered dishes, dead bodies. The sailors were fighting against people in purple uniform. Both sides suffered casualties. I drew the katana and joined the fight. So did the girl. You traitor. I crossed swords with one of the crew members. He was stronger than me but I just held him in place as the girl appeared to prepare to strike him. Flashing strike. Gee, in a blink of an eye, she delivered three hits, and the sailor fell dead. Not bad. Thanks for the assistance, cutie cat Tilda. Gee, the sailors turned most of their attention to us. I parried one of the attackers, and counterattacked him by piercing his belly and cutting through his side. The girl was rapidly piercing through the enemies. Soon we reached the purple coats, and thus pushed the sailors into a corner. Please, no, we surrender. The sailors threw away their weapons and surrendered. Good for you Tilda. The girl signed something to the purple coats, and once again pulled me. She led me out to the deck, where I saw many bodies covered, and a few sailors captured. To the side of this ship was tied another one, slightly smaller but with more cannons on its deck. Some soldiers were standing there and aiming their rifles at the captured sailors. While I watched the scene in silent awe, I felt something covering my shoulders. It was the golden coat of the girl. Let's go Tilda. She covered my eyes with her hand, and guided me to the ship. Signora. It was a soldier. Perhaps he helped us to cross the bridge. Good work. Please, make sure the ship is returned to the city. Gee, of course. S. I was led somewhere, then we went downstairs, and after a couple of turns I heard the creak. The hand was removed and I saw a tidy room. Don't be shy, pretty Tilda. You must be so tired, rest here. The girl closed the door and went somewhere. I followed her offer and took a nap. When I woke up, I felt someone petting my head and playing with my hair. Then, a hand tickled my chest. Before I could react, my arms were squeezing the hand. You foo-foo Tilda, what a cute kitten you are. She continued petting me. I let go of the hand captured, and it immediately started scratching my chin. Her the girl giggled. After she was satisfied with playing, we sat at a table and prepared to talk. I am Veronica Maria Di Benizio, the captain of the Sea Guard. My pleasure meeting you. V, I am Kiranami. Please, take care of me. Oh, I surely will take care of you Tilda. She pinched my cheek with blissful expression. You appear to be capable of taking care of yourself. How did you end up captured on that ship? V. I was enlisted to clean the deck. Then we were attacked by some birds and I stepped into the hold. If the reports are correct, they were smuggling something, so you became a threat to them. V. I guess so. Of course you are Tilda. They hired you in the city, didn't they? During the recent investigation there were rumors of a beast kin who killed a port guard. Rings any bells? V. It does. I prepared to fight. V3CH12. Their missions I've taken a fighting posture and had my hand on the hilt. You foo foo Tilda. Now I know that I found an unfaceted gem Tilda. I hope you are fine with meeting my father. He has a task for you. It is a good way for us to know each other, and also for you to have some money. 
V. Just how far did your investigation go? How far? I know everything that happened since you were found Tilda. For a second I felt like she is Yandia. Still, I postponed fighting my way out. Several days later we arrived back to the city. Right after I returned to the land, Veronica dragged me to the richest district. At first I thought we will arrive to one of the mansions but we proceeded deeper and deeper, until the mansions turned into actual palaces. We stopped only in front of the largest palace. She was let through all gates without any questions asked. The purple coats opened the front door and Veronica gracefully walked through the hallway. I followed her. Every person on our way bowed and showed their respect to her. You are a very peculiar person. You flatter me Tilda. V. We finally stopped in front of a guarded door. Just smile and answer father's questions. V. Signora. The guards bowed. Is further busy. V. His serenity is expecting your arrival. One moment. The guard disappeared inside, and a minute later exited with pale face. His serenity allows you to enter. G. Good job. She patted his shoulder. When we entered, I looked around the room. Behind the sturdy oak door was a large circular room with white wallpaper and golden air reliefs. Aside from several couches and a coffee table, there were many bookshelves, and a desk. Veronica approached the large wooden desk, where was sitting a man. She performed curtsy. May you live for many years, father. Your task was completed. I brought the beast kin. V. Come here. The man looked at me. Hello. I am Kuranami. May I know who you are? W. V. Bang me. I am the Serene Doge of the Most Serene Republic of Benizio. You need to know nothing more than this. I called for you after hearing about your martial skill and intelligence. Seeing that you managed to get the trust of a merchant crew. D. They were smugglers. V. Nobody asked for your opinion, Veronica. As I said. You showed yourself to be capable. I have a request for you. Will you accept this task, in exchange for payment and citizenship? D. I. I should think about it. What makes you doubt? D. I already saw that it is hard to find a job here, so I doubt that I will have any use of your offer. Not many beasts are granted citizenship. There are no employers or landlords who dare refusing citizens. V. You, stay outside unless called. The doge pointed at the door. As you wish, father. She bowed and backed away out of the room. I see. Then, what does your serenity wish for me to do? I want you to help investigating. D. I am sorry but I cannot accept the job without more information. Veronica. D. She entered and performed curtsy. What can I? V. Is she very capable? D. Her martial skills should be close to mine, not to mention she wormed herself into a smuggler crew. The most cautious kind of bandits. V. I see. If my daughter believes in you so much then, then vouch for her, if you are so sure. D. I vouch that Kuran army will be able to complete any task further gives her. May I be punished by the god, if I lied to you. V. You better be right. Listen then, beast. The pirates are becoming cheeky. Those damned cutthroats started robbing merchant ships right in the waters of Benizio. They even dared raiding our colonies and trading posts. They set up a wide smuggling network and are causing more and more trouble for the Republic. I want you to find where their main hideout is, and then report its location. If you can obtain crucial information, you will be paid a lot. D. I. I will give my answer after considering. Very well. Go. Veronica, guide her to any room and afterwards return. D. She guided me to a fancy room. Sorry. I need to go. Feel free to rest. You can hang your clothes in the wardrobe. V. For now, I decided to sleep in the bed. It was so soft and fluffy, that it was impossible to resist. The door to the office was opened. Father. V. Come in. Where is the beast? D. In my room. V. You insolent brat, respond properly. D. 
the doge threw a cup at her but she dodged it. D. How can I be of service? V. There is a new report. The shining moon was spotted on Black Demon. The spies claim that the bee and her miscarriage are hiding with the pirates. And I want you to track them down. The B.S. can be brought back in any way. Alive, or dead if you feel like it. D. Are you sure about their identities? Veronica was concerned. That is why you are to investigate. Now get out of here. D. I understood, father. It shall be done. She knelt and left the room. After the doors closed, she breathed out. Sister. Four sisters no one. Four sisters are a collection of honor shots, barely connected by a plot. Two girls entered the dean's office. Just why? Why did you need to start a firefight? He was overwhelmed with complaints after the two girls seemingly tried to kill each other. Because this. One of the girls, the violet-haired one started shouting, Clemen, I was just complimenting you. The other one, brunette, tried patting the violet-haired girl's shoulder but almost had her nose broken by a fist. Complimenting, my A. She was more and more agitated. That too Tilda. Before the fight continued, the dean hurriedly interfered. Stop it, you two. Why do you always cause me trouble? Why can't you be as calm and steadfast as your sisters? D. I sat in the deck chair. Wow. They already started talking about us. Slurp will it be alright? Should we interfere? Big Sis slurped her lemonade and looked at the window with concern. We were relaxing after another busy day at the academy. Just sitting in the deck chairs by the pool. Drinks, water, sun, and good shade. That's what I call life is good. If only. Nah. It will be fine. The dean managed to calm the girls down. A bit. Why should I remain in the same class with her? I want to be as far away from her as I can. The violet-haired girl continued throwing tantrum. Ow. You hurt my feelings. That was a stab right in my heart. Come and soothe my pain Tilda. The brunette clung to her friend and tried to hug her. You. Stay away from me. Stay a few thousand feet away from me. Hey. I sighed. Feels like the two of them are as always. Slurp B but will it really be alright to sit like this? P perhaps it is time to go and resolve this? I passed another bottle of lemonade. Nah, the dean can handle them. He can. Right? Why did you even fight this time? D. She. She s shouted. Pink. It was just a self-motivation Tilda. Why would you even be concerned with it Tilda? Brunette, you, W why would you think I am concerned? Violet, the situation was becoming so tense that even from here I could cut it with a knife. Such a good lemonade Tilda. Where did you even find it? Big Sis was distracted enough so I finally relaxed myself. I bought some good lemons. And when you have lemons, you need to make a lemonade Tilda. We said together. Meanwhile, no, Sir Tilda. I just said that her A is the best tilde. Brunette, you, you, JJJ, just die. Boom a black cloud appeared in the dean's office, and a huge chunk of the wall disappeared. It revealed the flustered face of my little sis, martyred again. And maybe we should have helped. I wiped off a drop of sweat. It was just another normal day at the academy. Four sisters no two. Four sisters are a collection of honor shots barely connected by a plot. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Right. Now I am ready for everything. I confidently entered the classroom and proceeded to the teacher's desk. My little sisters are looking at me. Scary. As I was about to pass out from worrying, every last one of them just pretended to look outside. It hurts even more, you know. A all right class. T today's lesson is plotting course in the open sea. The class was only pretending to listen, and the back rows were openly whispering amongst themselves. Guys, brunette girl with long wavy hair called out to the others. Just one call from Mo, and the entire class focused. Why am I such a failure? The lesson was going well, and I finished teaching the basics and theory of navigation, despite my hiccups. Sis, what should we do, if there are no stars, or we can't spot Polaris? 
Mo, T that's a G good question. Is she sinking me? Why? Why? I felt that my heart would jump out while I was answering. Even though I was here to teach everybody, in the end my little sister again was guiding me. After I somehow survived the machine gun bursts of questions from everywhere, I prepared to give the class my prints with the dusk. Since we are learning navigation, I wanted them to plot a course for a ship. The class was split in groups of two, with the exception of my sisters. They were given a harder task, simulating the plotting of my course to Mers el Geba. I was coursing between the groups, and giving them assistance when necessary. Finally, I approached my sisters. Is everything alright? Do you need help? Three pairs of hazel eyes glanced at me. It's fine, big sis. I looked into the tables and felt like crying. Mo already wrote down everything and even planned spare routes and ASW patrols. Don't cry, I, your pretty face must not be sullied by tears Tilda. New Jersey patted my shoulder and leaned to my ear. Praise Whiskey, she did her best. NJ, once again. Why do I always assume it's Mo? Right now I just want to bury myself. Nothing came to my mind and I had no idea how to praise Whiskey without making it evident. I glanced at Missouri but she was looking in the window. Good job, girls. B Big Sis is proud to have such smart sisters. What? No, 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 no. Few Tilda. We tried our best, I Tilda. So, who do you think is MVP? Mo. My brain melted down immediately but Mo was sending me suggestive glances. You all worked hard. I'll buy a treat for you all. This time I was big sis enough. Or Tilda. Guess who's gonna eat a lot of ice cream Tilda? New Jersey pinched Whiskey's cheeks. Why would I eat a lot? It's I who pays after all. I felt a stab to my heart. Cause I'm gonna give you mine Tilda? NJ. They are happy. So I did everything right. Right? A slight correction to Wisconsin's hair color. She is violet. If I understood correctly it is called grape. Don't throw eggs at me. I am not color maniac to know how they all are called. Just imagine her to have dark violet hair. V3CH13. Hired after I woke up the next morning. I reported to Veronica. I turned to my other side and said, good morning. I am ready to give the answer to your father. Good to know it. She yawned and stretched before standing up from the bed. I followed her lead and wormed out of the bed as well. I glanced at her nightgown, since I am a healthy human being who has the good view. There was a short shirt, which only covered her chest, and a mini skirt. Veronica put on the same clothes used yesterday. Why would you need to wear the same clothes? She silently opened the wardrobe and I saw stacks of tightly packed dresses. There were dozens of dresses and suits. Official duties, sweetheart. I would like to wear something else but I am on duty. If we'd have time, I would be a glad to take you on a date. Let's talk about good restaurants, after we return. V. I followed her to the office. The guards were standing there with sleepy faces. Good morning. V. Good morning, Signorina. His serenity is busy. G. Please report that my friend is ready to give her answer. V. The guard sighed, and after a few seconds of bracing himself for the inevitable, he stepped in. I heard muffled shouting from behind the doors, and after it settled, the guard exited with pale face. Thank you for your hard work. V. Thank you very much. I bowed. His serenity is ready to hear you out. He ate breakfast in the dining room. Gee, let's go then? Veronica pulled me in, and placed me in front of the desk. Good morning. Yes, yes, good morning. Be brief. D, I accept the dusk. Here is the file of our investigation. Don't mind the black lines. What? Do you not know how to read? D, I am more than capable. I continued glancing through the papers. The report was brief but detailed. I saw some nice starting points for my investigation. I see. I put the file on the desk. Keep it. Just don't forget to let Veronica read it too. Anything else needed for you to start? 
D. I will need some money too. Here is the blank check. D. Okay. Also, I will need freedom of the permission to act. He gave me a small paper with an insignia, a map. I stretched my hand to receive it. Stop standing there like a clothes rack. Make yourself useful and guide her to the Ministry of C. Let her take any map she requires. D. Yes, Father. V. I guess that's it. Then go, and start working. I expect you to yield results. D. We left the office. Good. Everything went smoothly. The cheapskate gave us more than enough assets to work with. Follow me, I will take you to the map storage. She pulled my hand. I was taken to a mansion, and immediately we headed to one of the rooms on the first floor. The employees asked who we are but after showing the doge's permission, no one interrupted us any longer. When I opened one of the huge map scrolls, I saw the map's detailed projection. Veronica did not react and continued reading the scroll, so I guess the projection is only visible to me. It was like a satellite map. It was more accurate than the original, and was expanded with more and more maps I read. By the evening I had a detailed map of the world. Benetian Republic is located on a large island, surrounded by archipelagos. The area where I was sailing was on the edge of the dense zone. Despite finding maps of the trading routes to other continents, I did not see them marked on the map. After I looked at the current world map, I saw a circle. I checked it, and somewhat confirmed that it would be my range. I had more than enough fuel to travel around the known world. I finally looked at Veronica. She was sleeping on the desk and making cute sounds, after a brief shake she woke up, MHM, what? V, I am done, good, let's go and sleep, V, the next morning we arrived to the port, I will try to hire a ship, V, it is unnecessary, I pointed at the horizon, where a pillar of smoke was approaching, I employed the slow steaming method to arrive, and while Veronica was dumbfounded, I picked her, in Princess Carrie, and jumped into the water. I ignored her desperate shouting, and headed towards the ship. Four sisters know three. Four sisters are a collection of honor shots, barely connected by a plot. Humming just a bit more. Ja asked a bit more. Ja you asked a bit more. Yes. I finally saw the long four pixels. White. Humming the bright light of the day was carefully blocked by the curtains and no flare could block the computer screen. Today there are no lessons, no training, and no need to hurry. I was finally free to indulge in appreciating pretty girls. After I was done appreciating the hidden, I pressed LMB. Senpai, I. I love you. Out Ilda. I love you too, Kchan Tilda. Click then I finally saw the lovely words. Kch good ending. I finally cleared this dating sim. I set the pants I shot as my desktop and went to the shelf. After I carefully placed the box alongside the other finished games, I started choosing the next one. I heard some creaking but did not pay attention to it. And here I thought what you are doing. I glanced at the door and saw Iowa. I was a bit busy choosing the next gouge, so I did not pay her much attention. This one has many pretty girls but this one is said to have such a good story. New Jersey. Am I going to wait forever? I flinched when I heard I's unhappy voice. I rushed to the door. Sorry, I. It's my day off, and everything. I dragged her in. What are you doing? Are you going to stay locked again? Yeah, I was just playing galges. Care to join? No, thank you. How about I hang out at yours? Yeah, sure thing. Do Jinshai are there. PC is here, choose whatever you want. Iwa looked around, and picked one of the Do Jinshai lying around. The longer she looked at my Do Jinshai, the redder her face was. You are productive, aren't you? Well, at least we have something to read. Yeah, do you need the copies? I showed her a couple of boxes. Yeah. And here I thought, where did the paper go? Her scornful glare pierced right through me. Ow oh, come on Tilda. Well, at least we have something for the bonfire. She put the boxes by the door. 
Whenever I stockpile too many doujin shis, the girls start a bonfire. We roast some potatoes, chat, and enjoy our time. Still, it hurts to have my work burned, but I's potatoes are the best. Games? I was sat at the desk and looked at the screen. This one is good. Also this one. And this too. Hey New Jersey. Can you recommend me something but your dating sims? I pinched her cheeks. Cute girls are the best tilde. If only my clumsy sis was just a bit cuter. Still, I had only one thing left. Fine. Willing to watch some movies? Don't slip me your crazy tastes. She gracefully sat on the couch and ungracefully sprawled. I may be s y big sis but she is cute whenever she lets herself relax. We started watching some of my gold collection. I love you. Will you marry me? Why yes. Yes. I was so worried this would not happen. Why would it not? My heart belonged to you right after I saw you for the first time. Crunch wanna some? I passed some popcorn. I just want to leave this place. I covered her face with her palms. However, her boiling of embarrassment was still visible. Just one more, please. No, no, no. She furiously started shaking her arms. You you are, come on, I, do it. For you little sister Tilda. You demon. She pouted but stayed. Just like that we wasted another two hours of our lives before all four sisters gathered in the yard for bonfire. Rest in ashes, Dujin Shis. Four sisters no four. Four sisters are a collection of honor shots, barely connected by a plot. After today's lessons were over I went to the square by the dormitories. There is a nice fountain where I like to sit. I sat on the edge of the fountain and opened a book. My nerves were calmed by the murmuring water. I was leisurely flipping the book's pages and soon lost the track of time, when I was engrossed in reading and already lost the connection with reality. I jolted. I immediately lifted my eyes off the book and scanned the surroundings. Indeed, the freak sister was passing by at the edge of the square. No, don't come here, don't come here. She did not even glance at me and just went somewhere else. Why? Why did you not look at me? I don't care. I continued reading but I felt like I was no longer in the mood for it. This damn perverted freak. If it was not for her, I would have finished the book by now. She just needed to walk here. She had no other way but to pass here. And she didn't even spare me a glance. Whatever. It is not my problem. I stomped away. When I found another good place to read, I tried to continue. Hey, whiskey. I saw Missouri on approach. Hi. Come on. Don't be so stingy. What happened? She sat beside me. Nothing. Why would you think something happened? Did NJ do something tilde? Mo. WW why would you think so? You. I see. She just stood up and went somewhere. Again. My reading mood was no longer there. Those big sisters of mine. Why couldn't she stay and talk to me? Did she think I am fine? No, I am completely fine. It's not like I miss the freak. Ha. Huh? Those stupid. As I finally found a quiet place for myself, I saw another one on approach. I when they glanced at me and continued going wherever she was going. Once again, I was abandoned. Just when I thought that, Iowa flinched and looked at me. I looked away. Wisconsin. If you want to talk about something. Uh. Uh. B Big Sis is ready to talk? Yeah. Why would you think I want to talk to you? It's not like I have anything else to do, so I am fine to talk to you. If you want it so much. S. Sorry. She backed away and soon disappeared. Uck. Uck. You 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 you. Those heartless sisters. Somebody just poured water over me, and it hit only my face. That's it. When I reached my room's door, I saw a short-haired brunette in hoodie. I heard you were causing trouble for your big sister's tilde? NJ, go away, you perverted freak. I couldn't look at her. I am not embarrassed. What's that in your hand? A book tilde? Hey, whiskey. How about Big Sis Angie reads you something as the bedtime story tilde? Too close. 
D don't push your face this close, I D don't want to. Then how about we chat Tilda? Even closer, no. And you don't want to be hugged Tilda? N J I I S surely D don't want to. W what are why you waiting F for or Tilda? Why can't you be honest for a change Tilda? She hugged me. W warm. W wait. G G go D D. Die. Even though she beating her sister. Wisconsin finally smiled. V3 CH14. Cheesing game mechanics. The initial shock of seeing a metal ship disappeared soon enough. Veronica calmed down and explored the ship. I was following her nearby, just to make sure she won't do anything obnoxious. After all, she already poked the hull with the rapier. What a sturdy thing for its thinness. I should say, I mentally set the course and let the ship carry us wherever I needed. It is a wonderful ship, yet. V. What's wrong? Why are there only three pitiful harpoon guns? She pointed at my magnificent main gun battery. They are much stronger than they look like. I doubt it. She must be too used to the usual cannons, that weight a lot, have a huge caliber, and barely can fire at 2,000 meters. For her those 57 mm guns are out of league. If I remember correctly, they fire six pound shells, while the warships I saw would fire at least 32 pound cannonballs. I don't know why, but I expected her to start crawling everywhere and start cranking the mechanisms. However, at most, she looked from close range, and she never touched anything unless it was required to continue moving. The doors, for example. It continued until she reached my centerline torpedo mounts. She started to explore them, and the torpedoes. When I confirmed that she is busy enough, I looked at my stats. Ding you received 9 copper coins, 1 silver coin, 74 upgrade points IJN Kirin Army, DDL. Upgrade points, 4 torpedoes, 2 thirds HP. 3700 high minus 99.9 percent au minus 68 percent 2041 nanometers depth charge mount stern rails depth charge type variable fuse wire guns 050 proximity fuse 050 after i improved the depth charges i decided to save some points to improve the guns we were not in a hurry so i could even hunt for some points those are incredible things. Are they powered? Veronica pointed at the torpedoes. They are. If they work. Interesting. Are. Right. I saw that one of the tubes is empty. Is it supposed to be like that? V. No. I just didn't have time to restock the supplies. If I remember correctly, they can be restocked at the base but I have no bases whatsoever. I already feel the need for fuel. So it would be a good idea to find a way to resupply. Also, to repair myself. I can't believe that Trapier managed to hurt my hull. Veronica insisted on continuing the examination, and went inside the ship. I had nothing to do so I went to the bridge and started looking around, trying to find an adventure. On our way I saw something by an island. The situation was interesting so I went there. Whatever I saw was not visible by the time I arrived. Wow. This is a huge room. And it even has glass protection? Veronica finished touring the ship. Welcome to the bridge. Are you concerned with something? She immediately noticed. I saw something near this place. I see. We better watch out. The pirates are active everywhere outside the warship patrol routes. V. I will keep this in mind. I set the course around the island, just to check if the object circled it, as the ship finished circling the island, and I prepared to return to the course. I saw a top of mast. Enemy. Veronica shouted. I looked in the binoculars and saw a Jolly Roger. Enemy contact, range 200 meters. I aimed the 57 mm guns, and prepared to launch a torpedo. The pirates noticed us as well. They turned 180, and presented us their left side. It looks like they accepted the fight. What are you waiting for? Do you need a special invitation? Veronica was shouting at me. I am not going to shoot first. We have no idea if they want to attack. 
As I said that, the pirates opened fire. Boom 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 boom. It was a full broadside of 18 cannons. All balls missed, and chain shots have nothing to destroy. Full metal, baby. Bang 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 my first shots missed too, however. There were so many more. Bang 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 Veronica was staring with her eyes wide open. Dozens of 57 mm shots were piercing the pirate ship. I intentionally used just AP shots with no explosives inside. I was farming the points, and this sturdy ship would not go down without assistance. Bang 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 as the pirate ship was turned into a cheese, I noticed that it started to slowly sink. It was now, or never. Splash torpedo hit the water, and then nothing happened. I was about to start shouting but after some time, bubbles appeared, and the torpedo moved forward. Slowly, painfully slowly, it was damaged by the launch and barely moved. Luckily, the torpedo did not change its course, and was steadily heading to its sacrifice. Five minutes later, the torpedo trace reached the ship, and boom a pillar of water consumed the ship, and it was split in two. The pirate ship rapidly sunk. Success? I still need to improve those unreliable things. I checked the stats. Ding you received 1 gold coin, 330 upgrade points. Hits, 52 upgrade points. Firing, 80 upgrade points. Torpedo hit, 0.8 modifier. It's fine. Better than nothing. Four sisters no five. Yesterday I was asked to greet the newcomers. A pair of girls recently entered the academy and required someone to guide them around. Usually it would be big sis but she is busy. The others are also unavailable, since Whiskey would start talking nonsense, and the dragon would lose the newcomers in a split second. I could only say that this is a pain. I approached the gates and started waiting for the newcomers. Ten minutes later I saw a carriage approaching. The carriage stopped by the entrance and the coachman opened the door. From inside the carriage appeared the two girls. Both were dressed in the academy uniform. One of them immediately stepped back. Behind another one. Hiya, how's it going? Welcome to the academy. Wanna have a ride? The girls' faces twitched and showed a very stiff expression. Fine. I was just tasked to show you around. Can't you at least understand a joke? I gestured them to come closer. Both of them passed by, and only muttered something. Pride and prejudice is the one's first step to falling. Finally, I saw some reaction. I have no time for this nonsense. One of the girls, a platinum blonde answered. She was the leader by the looks of it. This nonsense is under the principal's order. Now, follow me. The blonde stood in place for a minute, and only then she gritted her teeth and followed. I was showing them where are the facilities, and where they should go for what lesson. Then I remembered a thing, and stopped by one of the classrooms. R, right, which class are you in? Why should it matter to you? The blonde arrogantly dismissed my question. Because you will be the ones wandering around and trying to find where you should go? Then you will go and find where we should go. You are assigned to help us, so be ready to follow my orders. Blonde, ha. Huh? Listen then, mortal. I am doing this only because I was asked to, politely. I might as well drop you off somewhere in the middle of a forest and let you try find the way back. I picked up my staff and prepared to teach this arrogant girl a couple of lessons of my own. Come at me, you. The blonde prepared to fight as well. WW wait. Eh my lady. You can't fight here. The principal will expel us at once. The blue haired girl appeared from behind the blonde's back. She will be expelled too. The blonde shrugged her shoulders. I won't. I command the principal. Since I made a contract with him. He is now my minion in this world. Muahaha. Ha ha ha. Don't you even think I will overlook your behavior towards me? Just wait until I can show you how strong I am. You will regret this day. The blonde went full out whiskey, and stomped away. Bah, not my problem. Just don't forget where the dormitories are. I could only cry out to the withdrawing figures. Well, my day is now free. So I might as well go and do something useful.
four sisters no six. Today we are finally going to the training area. Remember, girls, don't cause trouble. At long last I can feel like a big sis, sure. Their choir made me feel at ease. Still, I will be keeping an eye on them. When we arrived, the classes arrived as well. I approached the teacher. Good day, I will reporting. Hello. Nice to see you arriving. Can you wait for a bit? The others are training. Some students cautiously looked at us, already expecting the show. Of course, girls, come here. Fireworks incoming? NJ, they are. Mo, after the students confirmed we are just watching, they returned to their training. Some of them picked up bows and started shooting, while others prepared to use magic fireball. One girl fired a small fire, which hit a target. It is wonderful to see something like that. Wonderful, right? My mood was immediately spoiled. Yeah, wonderful. New Jersey was lying on the grass with a notepad and suspiciously looked at the girl. Pathetic. Mo was only glancing at the girl. Why should I care? While Whiskey demonstratively looked away. Just what's wrong with them? Did I not teach them to behave properly? Did I fail in educating them? I am such a failure. Meanwhile, the girl finished shooting fireballs and let another student take place. Oh, hey, uh, show me some damage, will you? Missouri suddenly energized. Just watch how great I am. A platinum blonde girl stepped on a position. My sister's attention was immediately attracted to her. Oh, gods of wind, please, breeze there. NJ. Let's see how you will make a fool of yourself. Mo, just what those two are doing? With the blonde looked at this shameful bunch and returned her attention to the range. Oh, great fire, give me your strength to punish those who think they can stand against me. Fireball. I flinched. Despite the stupid incantation, the fireball was indeed interesting. It was almost the size of Bofa's muzzle flash. Its destructive effects were similar to who who who. What do you think, commoners? Am I great? Everybody applauded who who who. Now, you show me what you are capable of. Suddenly, the blonde shifted her attention to us, and for an unknown reason pointed at me. Be but. I am talking to the one behind you. Oh. I looked at Mo, who was cleaning her teeth with a toothpick. I feel like my sisters are trying to kill me today. You, Wade, I need Mo, come on, big sis, she's not worthy of our time. Mo, then, I demand that. Blonde, nobody cares. Mo, Mo, please. What a shame, what a shame. Teacher, I want her to show me what she is capable of. Finally, the teacher showed up and gave me a stiff thumb up. End of block 3.